Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend. Let us head fanfics. Back with amazing fanfiction. This is the second part of. What if Deku with multiple quirk got harem? Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Alright ladies and gentlemen this is the final match of the first year's sports festival. It's been quite a showing with upsets and over the top battles but now it's come down to the final two. Who will win? It's all in their hands now so let's welcome Izuku Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugawu present Mike announced as the two students walked out into the arena. In the stands the rest of Class 1A was silent as the grave. They all knew what this match meant to Izuku and Katsuki and were also ready for the fiercest battle of the festival. The rematch between rivals. Bakugu's been waiting for this since the hero exercise. Each has something to prove and neither is willing to back down. Yuraraka said clenching her fists as she watched Izuku and Bakugu face off. Who do you think is going to win? Siro asked the class at large as each student voiced their best guess. It would have to be Bakugu. Hiroshima stated crossing his arms. Izuku's got power, but Bakugu's got the upper hand with his explosions and in an area this wide Izuku can't count on his ninja skills to get him out of this. This is a straight up fight between men. Hiroshima finished before feeling a series of glares stab into his back as he looked at the girls of his class and swallowed. What no way did you see Midoriya's fight with Todoroki? I'd say he's got more than power going for him and just because he's trained as a ninja doesn't mean he can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe in an all-out battle. Sato countered getting a thumbs up from the girls of the class. They're both guys so I don't care. Minoru said slumped in his seat. Then don't say anything shouted Kaminari. I'd have to agree with Kirishima Bakugu's a monster I don't know anybody who's as freakishly aggressive during a fight and he's a fast learner when it comes to his opponent. Sad to say Izuku can't compare. Denki stated before receiving a similar stare down as Kirishima to which he promptly hid behind Shoji. Don't worry girls Midori's got this, Mina said smiling at her friends. And even if he doesn't win we can console him if you know what I mean. Mina said causing all the girls to blush at the thought. Though even if he does win we can still celebrate together. Mina said kicking back ready for the show. Oh I remember that kid. Didn't you smack him around a little raff? Donnie said looking up from his latest support item as he saw who Midoriya was going to be facing. Yeah the explosion kid. He was just standing outside the dojo shouting about how Izuku should fight him or that Izuku was a loser. I couldn't concentrate so I told him to get lost and he blasted me in the face little shit I taught him a lesson. Raf growled smashing his fist into his hand. Looks like Izuku's about to get some payback for all the crap that kid put him through. Raphael that is enough. Fighting for revenge is not the Hamato way. Master Splinter chastised Raphael who sat down. Sorry dad. Raf apologized going back to the TV. I hope you remember that as well Izuku. You don't want to use your power to get back at people that only leads to selfish and destructive ends. Splinter thought to himself with an image of Saki in his mind. Inko sat clenching her fists as she stared at the screen. So it's Katsuki you're fighting. I know I shouldn't hold a grudge but I'm still mad at him for trying to bully you Izuku but I know that's not the reason you're going to beat him. Inko stated taking a deep breath. Go for it Izuku I believe in you. Izuku stood in front of Katsuki who wore a savage grin. This is it you ing nerd time to put you in your place once and for all. That thing in training was just a fluke and I'll show you now. Katsuki growled popping off explosions in both hands as Izuku smiled. We'll see Katsuki but I don't feel like I'm going to lose. Izuku said taking his stance as both stared at one another. Begin shouted midnight. Katsuki exploded upward into the air and then shot downward towards Izuku his hand forward building an explosion that went off as soon as he made contact with Izuku. Katsuki smiled as the smoke cleared revealing Izuku and his serpent cowl his blackened fist having clashed with Katsuki's taking the brunt of the explosion. Katsuki dropped to the ground reaching forward with another explosion which Izuku parried setting the explosion of harmlessly to his side before punching forward to which Katsuki exploded himself up and over Izuku's punch landing behind him turning on his heel with another explosion as Izuku did the same with a loaded cobra cannon both attacks collided setting off another explosion they blew both back. Katsuki slid back on his feet dropping his arms as a hole appeared in the smoke cloud and Katsuki felt something smash into his stomach driving the air from him as he flew back towards the edge of the ring only managing to stop himself with an explosion to keep him in the ring. The smoke cleared revealing Izuku taking the stance he'd had when he faced Namo. His left hand forward palm out and his right arm drawn back and his hand completely engulfed into his forearm. Katsuki narrowed his eyes taking in everything about Izuku's stance before standing up straight and then rushing forward but before he took even three steps he was struck again in his stomach driving him back. Katsuki hunched over gripping his abdomen. It felt like a cannonball had hit him. He looked up at Izuku who was rushing towards zigzagging across the ring closing the distance. Katsuki could hardly keep up with Izuku's movement as he looked around himself as Izuku dodged around him. One point he was on the ground the next he was in the air and then behind him. 
Bakugu dodged to the side narrowly avoiding another Cobra Cannon and released an explosion blasting Izuku backwards but instead of gaining distance Bakugu pressed his attack rushing after Izuku and blasting him repeatedly back further and further. Oh man this has been non-stop from the start. Izuku and Bakugu are battering each other back and forth the tables are turning like a spinning top it's hard to say which one has the upper hand here what do you think Eraser? Present Mike asked seeing Aizawa intently watching the match. I say things have yet to get serious. Was Aizawa's blunt response as he watched Izuku stand at the edge of the ring with Bakugu in front of him cutting off any forward movement from Izuku. It's over Izuku I've got you cornered give up or don't so I can keep blasting you. Bakugu growled as Izuku wiped soot from his cheek and raised his hands in front of him and changed his stance. Bakugu took notice of this immediately and went in for the kill. I know he's got some stupid trick up his sleeve but I won't let him psych me out Bakugu thought as he advanced. In the stands Ajiro nodded in understanding not unnoticed by Shoji. What is it Ajiro you look like you know something. Ajiro smiled as he began to explain. Izuku's gone on the defensive now his best choice honestly. Bakugu has him boxed in but the stance he's taken is called the tornado stance. It emphasizes defense via avoidance and evasion letting your opponent work themselves raw while conserving your own momentum and stamina. Ajiro explained to Shoji who nodded in understanding. I would say that's the perfect thing against Bakugu's aggressive assault. Shoji agreed looking back at the match as Izuku danced on the edge of the ring avoiding or redirecting Bakugu's explosions much to the explosion user's annoyance. Bakugu pressed his palm forward only for Izuku to sidestep as Bakugu threw a kick only for it to be parried away. You bastard stop running Katsuki shouted reaching forward only for Izuku to knock his palm off course releasing a massive explosion that allowed Izuku to slip behind Katsuki who speedily turned around only to find Izuku gone having stayed with Bakugu keeping to his back to deliver another Cobra Cannon to Bakugu's back throwing the blonde back to the center of the ring. Bakugu got to his feet staring at Izuku both were breathing hard and Katsuki noticed something and smiled. You're almost out of juice. He said noting how much of that dark stuff Izuku had lost since the match started. When they had begun it was up to his shoulders but now it was in the middle of his forearms. Izuku panted but nodded. Yeah this is pretty taxing on my body but you're in no better shape. Izuku said as he threw his arms back as far as they'd go corkscrewing as they did so before rushing towards Baku the ring cracking under the speed of his footfalls. I haven't really tested this technique out and I'm not sure I can control it but it's my best shot at finishing this. Izuku thought to himself as Katsuki exploded into the air before coming down towards Izuku setting off explosions to throw him into spiral as he came down on Izuku who slammed his foot into the ground cracking it under his step as he pulled his arm towards him and feeling it heat up before igniting as he threw it up towards Bakugu. Twin Sidewinder Smash Izuku yelled. Bakugu looked at his opponent's flaming fist as he smiled. So that's how it is alright Izuku let's do this no holding back how it's her impact the two attacks collided and for the second and last time that day the arena erupted in noise wind and smoke. The ring shattered apart flinging large chunks of stone across the field as hot wind blasted into the stand's burning lungs. Minda who had hardly been paying attention was blown upward barely caught by Shoji in time before almost being thrown out of the arena as it shook with the force of the two attacks the walls shaking and cracking. Eraserhead what is going on with your students? They've nearly destroyed this place twice now. Have mercy on poor Cementos down there not to mention midnight present Mike spoke adjusting his glasses as he looked at Aizawa who simply sat there staring at the massive plume of smoke before the window of their commentator box shattered under the force of the explosion. They were worried about getting attacked by villains were in more danger from the students than anything else. Kamui Woods stated shaking his head as he looked back at the smoke. It took a minute before the smoke cleared revealing what the outcome of the battle was and it surprised everyone as Bakugu stood in the middle of the ring with two long furrows leading from where Izuku had been standing all the way to the outer wall of the ring where Izuku stood knee deep in two deep troughs before falling forward unconscious. And our winner is Katsuki Bakugawu in lieu of midnight who had been blown into the stands to the utter joy of several male spectators. It took a while before the arena was made presentable again for the award ceremony. That would be presented by none other than All Might who dropped into the arena from the sky. I A M H E R Ido present the awards to our top students in this festival All Might said flexing as Takoyami Midoriya and Bakugu were presented. Technically Ido would be here as well sharing third place with Takoyami but he was called away due to a family emergency. Gotta love those familial bonds right folks? Midnight stated giving a wink as All Might walked up to Takoyami presenting him with the bronze medal and a hug. You may have lost this time but learn from this. Try not to lean on your quirk so much and strengthen your foundation to overcome unfavorable odds in the future. All Might said to Takoyami who bowed. I will take your words to heart All Might. Takoyami responded looking at the bronze medal knowing how much harder he had to work. Walking over to Izuku All Might smiled awarding him the silver medal and giving him a hug. Don't let this get you down kid you came out and showed everyone what you had in the world took notice. I'm proud of you. 
All Might said as he then walked to Katsuki who grabbed hold of the metal pulling it over his head and looked at Izuku. I told you I'd beat you Izuku. Now we're even and I'm going to pull even farther ahead of you Katsuki shouted to which Izuku turned to Katsuki. Then I'll just work harder and move even further ahead of you. We're tied right now and I won't let you outpace me anymore Izuku shouted as Katsuki grinned glaring at Izuku. You don't stand a chance Izuku, was Katsuki's only response. All Might thought about interrupting the two but noticed how they were acting towards one another. It wasn't Katsuki's normal antagonism to Izuku. No this was a rivalry born anew. H-A-H-A-H-A you two are the essence of youth let that carry you forward to your dreams. Now everyone join me in praising the effort of all the students and staff here. Thank you for all your hard work. Plus Ultra the crowd erupted in criticism of All Might's misleading words bringing the sports festival to a close. Oh a man that s I thought Izuku would win it all oh well guess I'll have to get him an extra big pizza. I wonder if they make triple XL pizzas. Mikey said going to call in the order as Raf shook his head. Damn well he did his best I'll only give him one punch for losing. Raf said heading off to the dojo as Leo turned to Master Splinter who smiled at the screen. You seem pleased Master. Leo stated as Yoshi stood up popping his back. I am Leonardo. I've never asked for you boys to win every fight you're in just that you give your all and that's what Izuku did. Whether he won or lost I'm still proud of him. Yoshi stated walking off. Inko sat on the couch and pouted a little. She'd wanted her little boy to win but soon dropped her bratty attitude and smiled. He did a good job Izuku tonight is her night she shouted before coughing. All that cheering had really done a number on her throat. I need a cough drop. Izuku had come home to the biggest party he'd seen. His brothers were there as well as Splinter and his mother. Everyone had come to celebrate him getting second place in the sports festival. It had been a crazy night before Splinter and his sons and daughter left. Izuku had crawled into bed immediately afterwards and didn't wake up until almost noon the next day. He sat up and noticed his phone blinking on his dresser. He opened seeing several texts from Mina Achako and Toru all of them were varied but for the most part they were all congratulating him on his placing in the tournament. He smiled brushing his hair back as he stood up and stretched. It was then he read the last text from Mina she wanted him to come over to her house as soon as he could. Looking at the time he decided to shower and get his morning routine done before getting something to eat on the way to Mina's house. His mother was still asleep when he got up to leave but noticed the message light on the house phone. Feeling curious he pushed it to hear what it said and he was shocked to hear his dad's voice. Hey Izuku I'm sure you're probably asleep by now but I just wanted to let you know I did see the sports festival and just wanted to say how proud I am of you. I wish I could be there to see the kind of man you're growing into or should I say what kind of hero you're becoming but anyway I just wanted to tell you how proud I am of you Izuku and I love you. The message ended there as Izuku steadily wiped new tears from his face. Thanks dad. He whispered as he left to go see Mina hoping he could compose himself before he got there. Izuku had been jogging to Mina's house when he was stopped by a group of people crowding around him. Wow it's you from the sports festival Midori you're right. That was amazing you kid have potential one older gentleman said shaking his head as several kids grabbed hold of his legs. You were awesome Mr. One Boy said. Yeah I want to be like you when I get to high school you were all like Bam and Wu and Zing the boy excitedly shouted imitating Izuku's moves. Oh well a th thanks I just did what I could to win. He said rubbing the back of his head as he excused himself waving at the crowd as he jogged to Mina's house his face deep red in embarrassment as he came up to Mina's house knocking on the door before it was thrown open and he was pulled inside and light shone in his face as he was surrounded by the six girls from his class. W what's going on? He asked as they all looked at him. You know exactly what's going on Midori. I told you I'd make everything alright and now I have. Mina stated as she stood behind him massaging his shoulders as she looked at the girls in front of the two of them. First off the girls have something to say to you so could you just listen to them all before answering? Mina asked petting Izuku's fluffy green head as he nodded. Sure thing Ashidua too mean Mina he said as Mina tugged his ear to correct him. Good so I suppose Achako should go first. Mina said stepping back as Yuraraka stepped forward taking a deep breath. Izuku too know about what you and Mina did and I'm not mad. Well I was but that was because I was jealous of Mina having you first and the envy made me doubt you and for that I'm sorry. I thought you couldn't love me after going so far with Mina but it was because of Mina that I realized how big your heart is and I know you have room for Mina and myself so if you're okay with it I would like to be your girlfriend alongside Mina. Izuku's mouth fell open about to respond to the outrageous statement Achako made but his mouth was covered by Mina who when he looked back at her held a finger to her lips. You promised to listen until the end remember. Mina reminded him to which Izuku nodded as Achako stepped back making room for Toru who looked at Izuku. Izuku too love you it started when you saved me that day and grew the longer we were together until I couldn't contain it anymore. Even right now my heart so full of love it feels like it might burst and I don't want to stop loving you even if that means you won't be mine alone so will you let me be your girlfriend too? Toru asked before stepping back being replaced by a blushing Tsuyu. 
Ribbit. Tuam not very good at expressing my emotions so I just wind up saying things in a blunt manner so I'll just come out and say it. Izuku I like you a lot. I didn't know how much until I saw you at the USJ. You placed your faith in me with no hesitation and then put your own life on the line to save me and mine to without a second thought. Your courage to face insurmountable odds leaves me breathless and I want to stay by your side now and forever. So you moved backwards as Gyro came forward twirling her earlobe as she blushed her eyes dancing back and forth to Izuku. Normally Gyro was the coolest person in any room but seeing her in such a bashful state made Izuku truly appreciate how feminine she was and caused him to swallow trying to get some moisture back into his mouth. Behind him Mina smiled. I knew Gyro would come through girl just doesn't know how cute she is when she lets herself be. Mina thought as Gyro spoke. Well I'll like you alright. I didn't think much of you when we first met kind of struck me as a goody two shoes not that that's a bad thing Gyro said backpedaling before exhaling. Look I like you and this drive you have to make everyone around you a better person and I want to be a better person around you so let me be with you alright. She said stepping back as the other girls looked at her one thought running through their minds. That was a train wreck. Momo was the final one to step forward and cough straightening her posture as if she was giving a speech to the world embassy though the dusting of pink on her cheeks gave away her inner struggle. Midoriya I much like Gyro didn't think much of you. Someone who does things without thinking of the consequences and has romanticized the hero profession but after working alongside you I can see that my perception of you was truly flawed and for that I'm sorry. Momo said bowing her large bust jiggling some as she did so. Izuku's eyes widening not going unnoticed by the other girls present. Seeing how hard you work every day for our class and to achieve your dream is something to marvel at. It inspires me to do more and be better and I know that together on a more personal level we will grow and mature even more. I want us to be better together. Izuku swallowed as he looked at the gathered girls as Mina walked in front of him. And there you have it Midori we all have deep feelings for you but we wanted it to be your decision. I know this is a lot to take in, and if you don't feel the same about any of us we'll understand. Mina said swallowing this was her gambit after all if it didn't work it would all be her fault. Whatever you decide we'll accept it no matter what. Mina said as the girls all held hands in front of the man they loved. Izuku's head was swirling and all his predictions this had never come into his head. He thought he'd be more spastic about this falling all over himself but oddly enough he was calmer than ever. You all came to this decision together putting the well-being of the group over personal preferences. Two can't turn that down. I don't think I deserve this but I'll do my best to be the man you deserve that all of you deserve. He said standing up and smiling that brilliant smile that lit up all their worlds. As EUK you shouted the six girls as they tackled him eaching him on the lips. That Monday class was gathered telling each other about their weekend and how they were constantly being recognized by people on the streets. Bakugu looked back at Izuku. What's up first loser? Bakugu gleefully mocked Izuku who had been lost in thought until he heard Bakugu's rough voice. He had been staring at Ida who he had talked to prior to entering class. Tenya had come into the school building as Izuku was putting his shoes on and seeing him Izuku went over to ask about his brother Ingenium. During the sports festival Ingenium had been attacked by a villain and put into the hospital. Hey Ida is your brother doing okay? Izuku asked as Tenya turned towards him with a smile. Thank you for asking Midoriya and yes my brother will make a speedy recovery. I'm sorry to have worried you and for not being able to congratulate you on your second place win. I hear it was quite the battle. Izuku sighed it was obvious Ida was hiding his pain but Izuku didn't feel right prodding into such a personal subject. But now he'd have to deal with Bakugu's gloating this was how it was going to be for a while Bakugu would not let him forget his recent loss. Nothing how about you Katsuki? Izuku said being civil with Bakugu not showing how much his gloating was getting to him which only seemed to antagonize Bakugu who turned around quickly ignoring Izuku's question as Aizawa walked in fully healed. Mr. Aizawa you're all better now. Toru said clapping as Aizawa waved his hand. Recovery girl went overboard on her healing but yes I'm fully recovered but enough about my physical health time for hero informatics in which you will be picking out your code names for hero work. The class exploded at this once in a lifetime opportunity. This was their chance to make their stamp on the world here and now. Alright settle down. Aizawa stated as he began to explain. Normally you'd be doing this much later but due to the overwhelming number of offers from the sports festival it has been decided each of you should pick out a code name for your upcoming internships. Aizawa said before posting each student's number of recommendations. Everyone cast their eyes to the top student who was a shock to the entire classroom. With the most recommendations was none other than Izuku which immediately angered Katsuki. What the you came in second place and yet you got more offers than me how'd you do it Izuku? Shouted Bakugu as Midoriya smiled and shrugged. Guess I just made a better showing of myself. He said with a smirk that grated Katsuki's bones. Must have been all those crazy battles Midoriya was in. After all he was part of both matches that nearly destroyed the stadium and kept first place through two events. It's only natural that he'd have more offers Bakugu. Hiroshima explained only for it anger Katsuki more as he sat there fuming at his desk. 
Though having more offers is better even those who didn't get any will still gain workplace experience. But now that you understand what's going on I'll leave you in the hands of Midnight to help you create your names. Aizawa said as the door opened with none other than Midnight walking and her hips swaying back and forth as she waltzed in. Yes I wouldn't want any of you to be stuck with a name that is obscene Midnight said licking her lips as she stepped behind Aizawa's desk the owner of said desk having already crawled into a sleeping bag. Now then students you have 15 minutes to pick out a hero name which you will then come up and announce to the class. You can always change these names later before you graduate but the name should be special to you and what you want to say to the world each time someone says or hears your name. Midnight explained as each student began writing. Izuku wrote down and dismissed several options before thinking deeper. He not only wanted something for himself but to honor the aspects of one for all that would help him in the future and with that in mind he wrote down the name he wanted. Each student came up to present their name starting with Aoyama whose name was shortened from I cannot stop twinkling to can't stop twinkling and then Mina's name was changed from Alien Queen to Pinky. After these first two hiccups things seemed to go more smoothly with Tsu being known as Froppy Kirishima as Red Riot Gyro taking the name of her quirk earphone Jack Shoji taking the name Tentacle and Siro as Cellophane. Izuku couldn't help but feel a little underwhelmed at Ajiro going with Tailman but shrugged it was obvious and hard to forget. Sato went with Sugarman Denki calling himself Chargebolt Toru's name Invisible Girl brought a smile to Izuku's face yet another on the nose name but he found it cute. Momo would call herself Kriati another cute name in Izuku's opinion. Todoroki chose to go by his first name Shoto Takoyami chose a really cool name Tsukayomi which Midnight seemed to agree with wholeheartedly. Minda chose the name Grape Juice which was thankfully not perverse and Koji going with Anima. Things took a turn when of course Bakugou wanted to incorporate murder into his hero name which was an immediate rejection and then there was Yuraka who chose the name Yurabiti. Izuku thought to himself that it suited her but remembering what everyone called Achako before they knew her name after the ball throw he felt it was a missed opportunity. Infinity Girl would be a great name for Yuraka. He thought to himself with a smile. Izuku was surprised as Tenya came up using his first name like Shoto. I was sure Ida would call himself Ingenium, but I guess with his brother soon to make a full recovery he didn't want to take his name as if the old Ingenium was gone. Midoriya thought to himself worried about his friend and then it was his turn. Izuku walked up to the desk and spoke. Our names are supposed to be our mark on the world telling people what kind of good we can do so with that in mind. I wanted a name that showed people my hero way that I'm a force for good and a servant of justice so my name will be J-Force he said turning his board around to present his name and wondered why he said his hero way. For some reason it just seemed right. What a fantastic name Midori, it makes my whole body shiver with passion Midnight announced wrapping her arms around herself and twisting back and forth as Izuku blushed and several eyes pinned him to the wall the most unexpected one being Might, who glared at Izuku with jealousy following him all the way back to his seat. All those names were marvelous choices well except one. Midnight said casting an eye at Bakugou who fumed in his seat over his rejected names. Wear them proudly while doing your internships and with that I am out of here wake up Shota Midnight shouted as she left causing Aizawa to sit up angrily just as the bell rang allowing him to fall back to sleep as the students headed out for lunch. Izuku stood up from his desk and began walking towards the door with Achako in tow. Hey Deku want to eat lunch with me and the girls? Achako asked but before Izuku could answer a voice called out from a corner. Izuku looked seeing none other than the buff form of All Might with a comparatively small lunchbox waving him over. Wanna have lunch? All Might asked causing Achako to sputter in laughter at the hero's question. Izuku looked back at the girls who waved him off as he left to talk with All Might who lead him back to the lounge where there was a large stack of papers and then one lone sheet next to it. What's going on All Might is there something wrong? Izuku asked sitting down across from All Might as the hero returned to his true form and sat down. Stop worrying so much everything is fine in fact it's more than fine which is why I called you in here. There's a decision I need you to make. All Might said as Izuku swallowed in preparation for some life-altering decision. It's about your internship offers. This stack of papers is all the heroes who want you to intern at their agencies. All Might said pushing the foot-tall stack of papers towards Izuku. You'll find offers from some of the top heroes in Japan. From best genus Kamui Woods I think I even saw an offer from Endeavor in there. All Might said as Izuku stared at the stack of papers as if he'd found the Holy Grail. You mean all these heroes want me? Izuku asked as All Might nodded. Exactly any of these heroes could give you a clear shot at being the symbol of peace not to mention the experience of working alongside one of the top 10 pros. Now this is the crux of our conversation. On this page is the internship I most think you should accept. I know it's not my place but I believe that this internship will be the best in terms of training your new abilities. It's with my old friend David Shield on my island. Izuku's eyes nearly popped from his skull at All Might's admission. The David Shield the man who is responsible for making all your costumes and gear he wants me to come to my island for training. Izuku gasped his heart pounding in his chest at this great opportunity. 
Yes, I asked him to watch the sports festival and he found you interesting enough to put in an offer. The question is which will you take? On the one hand you can gain an early foothold in the hero world as the intern of a popular hero or you can travel to an island and gain more experience in training with your new power or even discover a new one. The choice is yours. All Might stated as Izuku lifted the first few pages of the list of offers letting each one fall back into place before taking the offer from my island. If you say this is better for my personal growth as the future symbol of peace All Might then I have no reason to doubt you. I will take the internship at I Island, Izuku said pushing the tower of other offers back towards All Might who smiled before bowing. I know it was selfish of me to put forth my own opinion on something that affects your future but I am grateful you went with my choice. All Might said sitting back up as Izuku smiled. Wasn't it you who told me that helping even where you're not wanted is the essence of being a hero? Izuku said laughing a little as he stood up with All Might mirroring his action. I suppose I was. I'll take care of setting everything up. I'm sure Aizawa told you that the internship will last for a week starting next Monday so I'll be sure to get a flight for us that Sunday until then don't go too crazy with your training okay? All Might said wagging his finger at Izuku who nodded rubbing the back of his head. Sure thing All Might in fact I was planning on using the rest of this work to take it easy get out and do something fun. All Might nodded. That's good young Midori your rest is just as important as proper exercise. It's good for both mind and body to relax I fully endorse this idea All Might said as he and Izuku shook hands before parting as Izuku smiled. Oh and here have this it's not like I can do much with it. All Might said as he handed Izuku the lunchbox he'd been holding. Thanks All Might. Izuku said as he left and began thinking. I have six girls to show a good time to. Oh boy where do I begin? Achako slowly opened her eyes she looked around seeing she was in the infirmary. She noticed the recovery girl was nowhere to be found but instead locked eyes with the five other girls from her class. She sat up slowly looking at them all. They all knew what this meeting was about there was no need for preamble. I lost. Achako stated her voice hollow and distant as Mina nodded. Thoughts swirled in Achako's head how she'd let herself and her parents down but most of all how she'd never feel Izuku in her arms again. It was all over now because she wasn't strong enough. This bet was you guys' idea and as per the terms you three have no right to interfere with Mitsu and Gyro since I've advanced the furthest in the tournament. There was a choking gasp from Toru who placed her hands over her face though neither could be seen. Momo bit her lip and clenched her fist. I didn't even have a chance to tell him how I feel and now I never will. Momo thought to herself holding back tears. I want you all to join us. Mina stated shocking the sadness from the room with her request. Momo and Toru looked up while Achako kept her head down. What do you mean? Achako asked her voice still hollow and flat. Mina took a breath before chopping Achako on the head causing the girl to yelp and hold her head. Just what I said I want you girls to be happy too I never intended to steal Izuku from any of you. Why do you think I did all of this? I knew if something wasn't done we'd all be attacking each other and ruin our friendship and hurt Midori. I love all of you as my friends and I love Midori as my boyfriend I don't want to have to give up either of them. I'm selfish that way and believe it or not Midori is just as selfish. I know he has feelings for Toru and Achako still and I'm fine with that and if he finds he has feelings for you guys as well then I'm good with that too. The only question is are you guys okay with that? Mina asked to Achako Momo and Toru as she held her hand out. Some is better than nothing the logic is sound. Momo said blushing as she thought of what she was about to say. After all bet or not it's not like we can just forsake these feelings of ours and much like Mina I've come to appreciate all of you as my friends and don't want to lose that. I will join you Mina. Momo said grabbing hold of Mina's hand only for both to feel an invisible grip on their hands. I still love Izuku and if this is the best way to be with him then I'll do it. I don't want to stop loving him or stab you girls in the back. Toru stated as the five girls stared at Achako who looked up tears in her eyes. It was really hard. I saw Mina and Izuku together and it hurt so badly. I thought if maybe I could be cutthroat like the women in those dramas I would win but it hurt to do those things to you guys. I just didn't want to lose him. Achako cried as she felt several hands on her shoulders. It's okay Achako I kind of overdid it with that video. I'm sorry everyone, Mina said as the girls embraced one another. Izuku took a deep breath as he walked to his waiting room. He'd wanted desperately to see Achako but when he'd headed to the infirmary he saw Mina and the other girls heading in. He'd chosen to let them have his moment. His next match would be Todoroki and he needed his full focus but as he rounded the corner he crossed paths with Bakugo. It was your plan right? Bakugo asked standing in front of Izuku with his glare. What are you talking about? Izuku asked before Katsuki grabbed his collar. You gave her that shitty plan so she could win and you wouldn't have to face me in the end you coward Bakugo shouted before Izuku slapped his hand away. I didn't give her that plan. I offered a plan but Achako said no. She wanted to beat you on her own and we both know close she came. Can you even feel your arm after that explosion? Izuku asked as Bakugo clenched his numbed arm. If anything I'm glad you won. It'll be easier fighting you than Achako. Izuku said walking past Bakugo who growled. I'm easier to fight. 
You're telling me I'm weaker than her. He shouted looking at Izuku as he entered his waiting room. We'll see about that you wing piece of shit Bakugou shouted as he stormed off. Izuku took a deep breath leaning against the door. He hadn't told Bakugou why it would be easier to fight him. To be honest if he had been in a match against Achako he didn't know if he could find the strength to fight her. Deciding he needed to refocus himself Izuku began going through his kata. He couldn't risk losing his cool again not like he had with Shinso. Todoroki was powerful one lapse and he was done for. It's time to go all out. He said to himself. Todoroki sat in his room thinking about all he knew about Izuku after watching him in the sports festival and USJ. I won't let him catch me off guard again. Todoroki promised himself as he stood up ready to head out to the arena. Izuku was walking towards the arena when he came across none other than Endeavor Shoto's father. Deciding it was better not to engage he attempted to walk by him only for the hero to speak to him. That was quite an impressive power you displayed at the first match of the finals. I've only felt wind like that from All Might's punches, stated the flame hero as Izuku turned to look at him. I hope he doesn't accuse me of being All Might's son too Izuku thought to himself. I created Shoto to overcome All Might and since you have a similar power you will be a good testing ground for him. As such I would appreciate it if you not disgrace either of you and give my son everything you have. That's all I wanted to say I apologize for holding you up. Endeavor stated walking away before Izuku finally spoke. I'm not all might. Endeavor looked at the boy curiously. And what's that supposed to mean? The number two hero questioned. I'm not all might and Todoroki isn't you. We're each our own person even if you are Todoroki's father. Izuku stated turning on his heel to enter the combat arena. Oh man this is an uphill battle for real. That Todoroki kid is one cold customer. Mikey said laughing a little before Raf slapped the back of his head. Oh please he's no match for Izuku. Kids all show and no substance. Depends too much on that quirk of his I bet one solid punch and he falls to his knees crying. Raf declared as they saw Izuku and Shoto enter the stadium. And here they are folks the boy who started our finals off with a bang Izuku Midoriya. And our glacier maker Todoroki these two have each displayed incredible power from the start so how will this battle turn out now? Shouted present Mike as the crowd cheered. Izuku and Todoroki looked at one another and both spoke at the same time. I'm going to win this. Let the match. Begin shouted midnight as Todoroki opened with an ice blast only for it to be blasted apart by the wind from Izuku's punch as his full cowled form raced towards Todoroki throwing a punch that Todoroki narrowly avoided while creating a shard of ice from the ground nicking Izuku's side as he spun to avoid the brunt of the attack and then threw out a roundhouse kick shattering the mini glacier showering Todoroki with chunks of ice. Todoroki slid back gaining distance from Izuku while attacking with ice again only for Izuku to punch it to pieces again before racing after Todoroki. While these kids are on it today. Izuku is hounding Todoroki around the battlefield not giving him any breathing room but Todoroki's keeping a solid defense via his constant ice assaults present Mike commentated. It's a good strategy staying close to Todoroki means he can't release any of those massive attacks like he did with Siro. Takoyami commentated earning a grouse from the tape user. Still Todoroki has the advantage he can just keep shooting ice out all day long while Izuku's eventually going to get tired of chasing after him. Siro stated, What are you stupid? Bakugu questioned staring at the battle intently. Nobody can use their quirks forever. Even I can only lay down so many explosions before I'm exhausted same thing for Icy Hot. He's got a limit and Izuku will find it. Bakugu said looking over at his classmates who all wore a Cheshire grin. What the are you guys smiling at? He shouted angrily as Tenya adjusted his glasses. So it's fair to say you are rooting for Midoriya? Tenya asked only to see a vain pulse on Bakugu's forehead. No I don't give a damn about Izuku he can lose or win I don't care either way I'm going to be the overall winner so the insect doesn't matter Bakugu shouted as Denki smiled. I don't know you seem to have a lot of confidence in Izuku. The electric user said before Bakugu's smoking palm gripped his face. You want to repeat that you wing battery. Bakugu growled as Denki shook his head vigorously noticing that all their female classmates had returned and sat together watching Izuku's battle. Todoroki stepped to the side avoiding a punch by Izuku feeling the wind from it tear at his shirt before reaching forward to grab hold of Izuku's arm only to have the one for all user spin on his heel slamming his foot onto Shoto's shoulder dropping him to the ground as Izuku stood in front of him. You're slowing down Todoroki that ice is eating up your stamina. Izuku said stepping back and taking a deep breath to center himself. You could use your flames to stop it but you won't and that's why you're going to lose. This is the only thing you've done so far. Izuku said lifting his shirt to show the small nick on his side. What you're doing now isn't going to cut it and I won't settle for half your power. I want to know you gave it your all in order to win Izuku shouted as Todoroki rose glaring at his green-haired opponent. 
Did my dad put you up to this? Is he willing to bribe my opponent just to get his way? Shoto shouted rushing towards Izuku but the buildup of ice was slowing him considerably so much so it was like he was moving in slow motion when Izuku stepped forward slamming his foot to the ground as he slammed his full cow fist into Todoroki, stomach throwing him back but not before Shoto managed to coat his arm in ice. Izuku hissed at the chill as he looked up seeing Todoroki's next attack coming at him but just as before Izuku was able to dodge it and unleash another gust of wind with his punch nearly knocking Shoto out of the ring before he created a chunk of ice to catch himself. Izuku landed his green eyes full of anger. I didn't come here for this. I want your best Izuku shouted once again advancing on Todoroki who growled. Why do you care so much if you can win like this what's it matter if I give it my all? Shoto argued which earned him a glare from Izuku. Because we both want to be heroes right? Being a hero means giving it your all no matter what every day if you don't then you don't deserve to be here Izuku shouted jumping towards Todoroki with another punch that the ice user barely avoided with a shield of ice as he dodged to the side, looking up in time to receive a punch to the face as he tumbled away. If you don't give it your all you're insulting not only me and yourself but everyone who you fought before. They gave their all and here you are giving only half of yourself. What was the point of their sacrifice then? I won't give you or him the satisfaction of using his power. I will continue to reject him for what he's done. Shoto stated as he stood up. Don't give me that it's not his power it's yours you use it for what you want. Only you can decide how to use that power to become the hero you want to be not your dad or anyone else shouted Izuku as Todoroki felt his heart thunder in his chest. You still want to be a hero right Shoto? The words of his mother and the fact that Izuku wasn't going to give up on this changed something in Shoto. Fine then if this is what you want then I'll give it to you because like you said I want to be a hero too Shoto declared as his left side ignited in flames steaming away the frost on his right side. Yes Shoto that's it unleash your true power Endeavor shouted from the crowd wearing a maniacal smile. You well what a doting father Endeavor is right folks but on a more pertinent note Shoto Todoroki has for the first time since the festival started ignited his left side how will things change now? Present Mike asked as Todoroki unleashed a swath of flames at Izuku engulfing the boy and until a hole was punched in the wall of flames slamming into Todoroki's shoulder spinning him to the left as the flames abated Izuku was revealed his shirt completely burned off as his arms were encased in black and steam came arced off him. Full cow serpent style. Izuku stated to the crowd. What is this Izuku's change somehow what is the secret of these blackened limbs? Shouted present Mike as Izuku's class got its first look at his new technique. So that's what he used to beat that Namu thing is it? Bakugo asked clenching his fists in frustration. I never knew how muscular Midoriya was. See you stated swallowing hard as her eyes roamed his form. Tell me about it the guy looks like he was carved from marble. Gyro said blushing heavily and licking her lips. He feels even better than he looks. Mina stated rubbing her thighs together. Shoto looked at Izuku. Well Midoriya looks like I wasn't the only one holding back. Shoto said before unleashing a swath of ice towards Izuku who disappeared right before it made contact appearing at Shoto's left side with a ed fist. Shoto jetted flames from his left side to block Izuku but felt a massive blow to his side sending him reeling before he pressed his right hand to the arena calling up a large wall of ice to keep him from flying out of the ring. I had to know if you were going to give me your best before I could do the same. That was my Cobra Cannon. Izuku stated ing back his fists as Shoto watched his hands disappear into his wrist. That's quite disturbing Midoriya. Shoto stated before Izuku laughed. Shishishishi I thought so too at first but your flames are really incredible Todoroki even from here I can feel your heat but now it's time to end this wouldn't you say? Izuku asked rushing towards Todoroki who smiled unleashing a massive swath of ice at Izuku who avoided the attack with ease appearing in the air before diving towards Shoto who created flames melting all the ice in an instant. Midnight this has gone too far I'm stopping it now Cementa stated worried that these two attacks at such close range could harm the boys irreparably. Twin Cobra Cannon shouted Izuku as the two closed in on one another only for a series of concrete slabs to erupt from the ground but at this point Izuku couldn't stop his attack his fists slamming through the slabs as Todoroki's massive fire attack shattered the others the entire stadium erupting in light sound and wind. My goodness a strong quirk doesn't necessarily mean you'll be a good hero but these two are amazing Cementa stated as the smoke began to clear and they saw Todoroki collapsed on the floor of the ring while Izuku was pulling his arms out of the concrete of the ring. W what happened how did this come about? Shouted present Mike as Aizawa answered his question. Well I didn't see it but look at Todoroki's feet. Aizawa stated drawing everyone's attention to Todoroki's feet that were iced to ground of the stadium. If you look closer at Todoroki's forehead you can see a bruise and so in short Todoroki ices himself to the floor to avoid being blown out of the ring by the attacks while Izuku's attack somehow made it through the attack but was knocked off course by the blast and slammed into the ground anchoring Izuku who then drags himself towards Todoroki ending things with a headbutt knocking his opponent unconscious. Aizawa said finishing his explanation as present Mike looked at him suspiciously. 
Are you moonlighting as a detective or something eraser? Present Mike asked as Aizawa sighed at his friend's idiocy. Thank you for that explanation eraser head the winner is Izuku Midori a midnight shouted as Izuku stood there his body stinking as sweat ran over the slight burns on his body his chest heaving with each breath as he looked down at Shoto who was slow coming back to the waking world and sat up. Looks like it's my lost Midoriya. Todoroki said raising his hand to put it to his head but was instead grabbed and pulled to his feet by Midori. That was a really tough fight Todoroki thank you. Izuku said shaking Shoto's hand as the other boy looked away. Sure whatever, he said before the two broke apart. Shoto looked down at his left hand as he entered the tunnel hearing his father's voice. You lost because you've neglected your flame training for too long but I'm glad you've let this rebellion go and we can focus on your future. Once you graduate you'll work under me at my agency. And I will make you into the next symbol of peace, stated Endeavor as Shoto locked eyes with him. I haven't let go of anything. I just stopped thinking about you is all. I don't need you to obtain what I want for myself. Shoto stated walking past his father still contemplating his decision to use his flames in his match with Midori. Midoriya sat on the exam table in recovery girl's office as the heroine placed ointment on his burns. You're really doing it kid you're so close to winning it all. Well done young Midoriya yet again you've exceeded my expectations but the part I'm most proud of is how you refuse to allow Todoroki to continue rejecting himself by rejecting half his power. It's that part of you that will lead you to be a great hero more than any of your powers. All Might said as the door was flung open startling the number one hero enough to cough up. Midoriya that was amazing the whole stadium can't stop talking about you. Tenya stated adjusting his glasses as he looked at his friend. If I win my next match I'll have to face down that amazing power of yours Midoriya. On the one hand I'm excited to pit myself against it but on the other hand it's frightening. Tenya thought as he was pushed to the side. Midoriya what kind of monster are you? That match was like watching a kaiju battle Minoru shouted the image of a green-haired Godzilla and a red and white Ghidorah in his mind. The stage is completely destroyed because of you two mind a screeched. Okay that is enough you three go back to your seats with all that noise demanded recovery girl as the three boys left. Well I'll have to part ways with you here Izuku my match is up next. I'm looking forward to facing you afterwards Midoriya. Ada said shaking hands with Midoriya as Ida entered his room. Looking forward to it Ida. Izuku stated as he and Minda went back to their seats before being surrounded by their classmates. Midori I didn't know you were that ripped that super manly bro Kirishima shouted. You gotta spar with me sometime. Taking hits like yours will definitely toughen my hardening. Kirishima said leaning over the back of his seat. It seems you've been holding back in our matches Izuku. I don't know whether to be insulted or grateful. Anjiro stated. You two have been training together I've gotta get in on this now Kirishima stated. What was that power of yours anyways Midori? All that black stuff on your arms and legs looked really cool. Siro stated. It is the mark of a warrior of the shadows. Midoriya has harnessed his inner darkness. Takoyami said though no one could hear him over the clamoring of the other students. I'd be happy to spar with you Kirishima and well that power is just another aspect of my stockpile is all. Hardening my skin with the excess energy I have. Izuku explained before the conversation was cut off by present Mike introducing Ida and Shazaki. Now that the stage has been rebuilt after that cataclysmic match thanks to Cementos let's keep on rolling with our next match. The engine team from 1A Tenya Ida and our goddess of the green from 1B Ibarra Shizaki present Mike shouted to a multitude of cheers. Begin shouted midnight before Ida raced across the cement grabbing hold of Shizaki by her shoulders and running her right out of the ring in a matter of seconds. Shizaki is out of bounds the winner as Tenya Ida announced midnight. While a total split second victory guess Ida was making up for his so-so victory over Meihatsu. Praised present Mike as Ida bowed to his opponent before leaving the stage stiffening some as present Mike brought up Hatsu. Mina stood up stretching a little heading for the waiting room before her match only to have Achako grab her hand. Good luck Mina. Achako stated giving her a thumbs up as Mina smiled. Well I don't know how well I'll do but I'll give it my best Mina assured her as she left to get ready for her match with Takoyami. Hem that's strange I thought something might be up between the girls. They seemed really cold to each other but now they're all chummy like nothing happened. Sato said with a shrug. Probably their parry. Minda's mouth was taped over by Siro before he could finish that statement. Dude do you want to die a horrible death? I mean Mina could literally melt you into a puddle man. Siro stated shaking his head as Minda struggled to get the tape off his mouth. The match soon began with Mina using her agility to avoid Dark Shadow but just couldn't close the gap between the two before Dark Shadow forced her out of bounds with one blow. Well it happened as I thought it would. Izuku said shaking his head. Takoyami is just too much to deal with for most close combat specialists. And considering that Dark Shadow can act independent of Takoyami's own action any fight with him is practically two-on-one. Izuku muttered to himself taking a few notes. After all depending on how things came out he might be facing Takoyami in the final match. The next match was Bakugou vs Kirishima. Who do you think will be the winner Midoriya? 
Tenya asked looking between the two combatants. Hiroshima can withstand Bakugu's explosion so he has the advantage on defense but Bakugu's combat prowess is on par with you who has received formal training so I'm not sure his hardening will be enough. Izuku nodded at Ida's assessment. Yeah Kirishima's win will hinge on if he can connect with a strong hit or outlast Bakugu's explosions. Izuku stated as the battle got underway and the outcome being Bakugu's win after delivering a multitude of explosions against Kirishima exhausting his hardening and knocking him out. Well it looks like it's you and me next good luck Izuku said shaking at his hand before the two parted ways only to meet back up in the arena. Well folks seems the last three battles of the festival will be a showing for 1A with the final four being Katsuki Bakugu Fumikage Takoyami and the two contestants here now. Izuku Midoriya and Tenya Ida. How will this match end I wonder? Present Mike questioned as the two competitors looked across from one another. Begin shouted midnight as Ida shot forward at Midoriya going for an engine enhanced roundhouse that Izuku ducked under before kicking upward towards Ida's chin which he the taller boy barely avoided landing on his foot and bringing his leg down an axe kick that Izuku rolled out of the way to dodge caning his feet and receiving a kick to the stomach that sent him sliding back. Now's my chance while he's off balance I'll run him out of the ring. Ida decided activating his recipro burst and rocketing towards Midoriya ready to grab hold and drag him out of the ring but just as he got within range Izuku slid his foot forward dropping low to avoid Ida's grab and tripping him. As Ida fell forward Midoriya grabbed his shirt and threw him over his shoulder. Ida's momentum took care of the rest as he flew over Izuku and landed out of the ring. Izuku Midoriya is the winner Midnight announced to the cheering crowd. Look at that ladies and gentlemen Midoriya used his opponent's speed against him allowing him to heft and throw it out of the ring can anyone stop this kid? Shouted present Mike as both boys shook hands. Good match Ida you kept me on my toes. Izuku said smiling as Ida nodded. I overestimated my speed and let you take advantage of it. Yet again I've learned something from you Midoriya. Tenya stated as they parted ways. It was on the way back to his seat after retrieving his phone from the waiting room Ida received a call from his mother. Yes mother I'm sorry I didn't win. Ida said responding to what he assumed was his mother calling him to console his loss. If only that was the case. Izuku rubbed his chest as he walked back to his seat rather than bothering recovery girl about it. He was sure it would just be a bruise nothing to worry about as he sat down. The second to last match was about to start and he didn't want to miss anything. One of these two would be his opponent in the next match. He didn't know which he wanted to face more. On the one hand he had Bakugu who no doubt would push him to his limit with what he knew now but Takoyami would keep him at a distance forcing Izuku to use his own long distance techniques to counter. Either way it would be a challenge and that is exactly what Izuku wanted. As he watched the match it was clear that Takoyami was at a disadvantage with all the light Katsuki was producing and as Katsuki unleashed his new move stun grenade Izuku knew it was all over then and that Bakugu would be his next opponent. Izuku clenched his fist ready for their rematch. Izuku looked himself over in the window of a nearby store making sure not he was as presentable as possible. This would be his first date with Momo and knowing that she was an upper class girl he couldn't afford to make a bad impression. He sighed looking at his nicest clothes. He wore a button-down green and white checkered shirt with black dress pants and even went so far as to clean his red sneakers to the point they looked nearly brand new. I hope she likes this, he said before hearing the sound of heels clicking against the pavement and turned to see Momo dressed in a salmon-colored sundress with white sandal heels. Her hair wasn't in its usual ponytail instead tied into a thick braid down her back. He smiled looking at her as she stopped in front of him. Izuku swallowed taking in the perfection that was Momo Yeirazu. You look good yay Arazo that dress really suits you, he said smiling at her. Momo blushed taking in Izuku's clothing she liked the fact he hadn't gotten all that dressed up for her. She wanted this to be organic between them not letting their monetary stations dictate their evening. As do you Midoriya you cut quite the figure, she said smiling as well blushing some. I was surprised to get your call but happy. What did you have in mind for our DD date? She asked stroking her braid as Izuku coughed. I'm um, well I was hoping we could maybe take a walk on the beach. He asked not sure if something like that would be up to Momo's standards. Momo smiled with a blush. That sounds wonderful Midoriya. Momo said secretly happy that instead of trying to go all out to impress her he did something simple but heartfelt. Being the daughter of an upper class family she was often given material gifts that had no thought behind them and she hoped that Izuku wouldn't do that and seemingly he hadn't. Izuku smiled as he offered his arm to her to which Momo grabbed on and they strolled through the city arm in arm heading to Dagaba Beach. Momo looked at the white sand and the crystal clear water. I'd heard that the beach had been cleared recently I never knew it would look this beautiful. She said as they walked onto the sand and to her surprise there lying near the water was a blanket with a picnic basket on it. Momo turned to Izuku who was blushing at his offering. Two no it's not much but I thought a picnic on the beach would be nice. He said rubbing the back of his head as Momo smiled wide hugging him and burying her face in his chest. Why yeah Yurazu? Izuku shouted before Momo pulled back looking at him. Call me Momo. 
She whispered as she bent down to take her shoes off feeling the warm soft sand of the beach underneath her feet as she walked to the picnic sitting down as Izuku did the same. You know I don't get simple things like this often. Momo said seeing Izuku wilt before she shook her hand. No don't take it the wrong way. I've lived most of my life in the lap of luxury so much so that things like a simple picnic are a novelty to me. The experience of sharing a meal across a blanket underneath the sky and listening to the sound of the ocean it's so special to me. Momo placed her hand on Izuku's. Thank you so much Izuku this is just perfect. She said as Izuku smiled happy he hadn't made a complete fool of himself. No problem Momo and please call me Izuku. He said as he reached into the basket and pulled out a large bento box. I'm not a great cook but I'm pretty good at some things. He said presenting a perfectly cooked dozen rice balls. These four are stuffed with strawberry preserves these are filled with chicken and the final four have cheese in them. I know it's weird but trust me I think you'll like it. He said as the two each grabbed a rice ball. Momo looked at the rice balls and picked up the cheese filled one. Momo took a bite to find that it was indeed delicious. Class representative all around good guy and now chef my Izuku how many hats do you wear? Momo said as Izuku blushed. Oh it's just something I picked up from one of my mom's cooking shows is all. I think the chef's name is Megumi something or other. He said as he leaned back taking in the sight of the sea and the smell of the salt. So Momo who'd you choose for your internship? Izuku asked as he pulled out a thermos pouring them both a cup of tea which Momo accepted gratefully. Momo felt a slight drop in her joy at Izuku's question. I only got one from the heroine Uabami. Momo said as Izuku smiled. That's great Uobami is a high-profile heroine who specializes in rescue missions. I think you can learn a lot from her especially when it comes to dealing with the public. He said nodding pumped that Momo had gotten such a good offer. Momo looked at Izuku and shook her head. You could see the bright side to a hurricane couldn't you? That's what I love about you Izuku you're always looking up at something better. I know you got a lot of recommendations have you decided who you're going to apprentice under? Izuku nodded happily at his choice. I'll be going to Island to apprentice under David Shield. Izuku stated only to get an eyebrow raise from Momo. David Shield he's the man who makes all of All Might's support gear and costumes right. Why would you go there I mean wouldn't field experience with a pro hero be better? Momo asked as Izuku smirked. Normally I'd agree with you but I only recently got my quirk and am steadily finding out more uses and applications for it. I think it would be better to go to a scientist like David Shield who could help me understand and utilize my quirk to its fullest. I may miss out on field work but in the end mastering myself should be my first priority. Izuku said looking at his fist before looking up at the sunset only to receive on the lips from Momo her full weight pushing him onto his back as he hugged her to his chest. When you say things like that I just can't help myself. She said sitting up as her dark eyes stared into his green ones. I just want to wish you good luck on your internship and I'll be waiting to see you when you get back but I won't be the same Momo you knew before. I intend to make the most of my time with you Obami to become a better partner to you. Izuku smiled running his hand across her braid. Thanks Momo, he said before the two shared another. Izuku looked at the massive mansion in front of him as he watched Momo walk into the front gate. This place is huge Izuku thought to himself trying to hide his shock. Momo giggled looking at Izuku's face. Maybe we can have our date here next time. I'd really like to show you around. She setting his cheek before going inside as Izuku made his way home. The next day Izuku found himself in a clothing store but it seemed to cater to a particular group of people those interested in rock music. He looked at Jairo who wore a sleeveless blue shirt and jeans with the knees ripped out and her boots. Um Jairo what are we doing here? He asked the rocker girl who gave a grin. We're updating your look Izuku and there's no better place than here. She said grabbing his arm as she pulled him in. Needless to say Izuku was way out of his element here. The sheer selection of leather goods was astonishing. Okay take this and this oh this is really cool Jaira was piling clothes into Izuku's arms at a rapid fire pace until he could no longer see what was going on all he knew was that Jaira was pushing him into a dressing room. Try these on and we'll see what works. Izuku dropped the massive pile of clothes on the bench and grabbed one outfit which he tried on before opening the curtain. How's this? He asked as Jairo looked him over. Izuku wore black jeans with the hem of each pant leg nothing but ragged thread and a top that was a red t-shirt with twin guitars across it and fingerless gloves. Now I'm not feeling it next. Jairo said as Izuku shut the curtain before opening it again this time with a leather jacket with studs on the shoulders a black t-shirt and blue jeans. Once again Jairo shook her head. Next, Izuku shut the door and opened it again this time with shades of leather vest jeans and boots with spikes on the toes. Jairo placed a finger to her chin before holding up the jacket and shirt from the previous outfit and the gloves from the one before that and smiled. I think we have a winner, she said before looking at Izuku and reached up to his messy hair ruffling it some. You should grow your hair out, she said as she looked into Izuku's eyes they were so green like looking into emeralds. Jairo is there something wrong? Izuku asked to which Jairo shook her head. No nothing's wrong. 
Come on get dressed and I'll pay for these then we can go to the next place. She said pushing Izuku back into the dressing room and closing the curtain hiding the blush on her face as she went to pay for the clothes Izuku joining her shortly after. Gyro I could have paid for those. Izuku insisted only for Gyro to shake her head. Nope I wanted to buy them for you so I did don't read so much into it now come on. She said tossing the bag of clothes to him before leading him to another store in the mall this one not as far out of his comfort zone. It was a store of instruments. Izuku looked at each musical instrument before him from saxophones to piccolos. Um Gyro I don't know how to play any of these. Izuku stated as Gyro turned around with a guitar. Yeah I figured as much that's why I'm going to teach you. She said walking to the back of the store where there was a soundproof room. Here we can test out the instruments and you don't have to worry about anyone hearing how bad you may play. Izuku felt a bit more relieved at knowing no one but Gyro would hear his poor playing. Um okay I'll give it a try. I always wanted to learn to play an instrument. He said as he sat down in the chair and Gyro placed the guitar in his lap. That's the spirit it's not as hard as it looks I promise. She said grabbing hold of his hands and placing them in the correct spots and then spread his fingers with her own. See now you've got it now repeat after me. She set her face inches from his as she stood behind him her chest pressed to his back as she coached him through a few notes and Izuku soon caught on. He was no savant that was for sure but he was a fast learner. Well look at you you'll be pulling a band together in no time. She said smiling and laughing as Izuku stood up giving a chuckle. Yeah maybe I'll write you a love song or something. He said immediately hearing Gyro's laughter stop. He looked at the girl her eyes wide and her face red. Ah oh, really? She asked in a whisper as Izuku had his head to the side. Yeah why wouldn't I you're my girlfriend and you obviously love music I figured it'd be something nice I could do for you. Should I not? He asked only for Gyro to cross her arms and look away. Didio what you I want I just wanted to share something with you. She said only for Izuku to come up to her and place his hand on her head rubbing it softly. You know it's okay to ask me for stuff Gyro. I'm yours remember I'd do anything for you. He said hugging her as she vibrated against his chest. P please make a love song for me. She whispered to his chest as Izuku nodded. One love song for my girlfriend coming up. He said chuckling a little as the two left the music store. So Islan hun that's great Izuku. I'm going to be interning under death arms. Gyro said as Izuku walked her home. That's really cool Gyro. Death Arms is a great hero and he's a rising star right alongside Kamui Woods. You'll get a lot of hands-on experience I bet. Izuku said happily to which Gyro blushed as they neared her house she stopped Izuku beforeing him standing on her tiptoes as the two at. Izuku wrapped his arms around as Gyro poured her passion into the intimate act before pulling back winded her breath puffing against Izuku's chest as she looked up at him through her lashes. Don't forget your promise Mr. Big Shot. Gyro said as she walked the rest of the way home and entered her home. Izuku smirked placing his hand in his pockets. Guess I better get to practicing. He said as he walked home. The venue for his date with Tsu was probably the calmest one he'd picked though Gyro had driven their date herself but this was something rather nice. He saw Tsu approaching in a green skirt with a white t-shirt and her green hair was done into twin ponytails at her back. He smiled as she walked up to him looking at the side of their date the aquarium. Hem Izuku this is a rather common first date place I love it. Tsu said as she grabbed hold of his hand. Izuku smiled as he looked at Tsu. Yeah but that just means it's a staple of most couples if it's not broke and all that. Izuku said as he and Tsu walked into the aquarium being surrounded by the bounty of the sea as fish swam overhead and around them. Tsu marveled at the scenery before her but what astounded her more was that she was here with Izuku hand in hand. What made you choose the aquarium? Tsu asked as they entered the center of the aquarium as they look at the branching corridors leading to specific attraction. Oh well really I wanted something cool like you. You always have this placid look on your face but I can tell you're a much deeper thinker than you let on and that reminded me of the ocean. From where we stand it's just a lot of water for miles but if you look a little deeper you'll see that the sea is alive with activity and beauty and I think that's how you are. Izuku said rubbing the back of his head. That sounds lame doesn't it? He said only for Tsu to shake her head. I'd say that's pretty accurate to be honest I've never been compared to the ocean before. That makes me happy. I really do like the ocean it's like a whole other world down there. That's one of the reasons I wanted to be sent to Selkie for my internship. Su stated as Izuku nodded. Oh yeah he deals with incidents on the water working hand in hand with the Coast Guard. He's perfect for you and your quirk I think you can really show your true power out there. Izuku said as the two walked down the hall to the octopi exhibit stopping in front of the most lethal octopus the blue ring octopus. It's so beautiful and yet its venom is powerful enough to kill several people. Izuku said looking at the small octopod as it crawled along the floor of its tank. Much like poison dart frogs they come in such vibrant colors but are really lethal. Sue explained as they moved along to a large empty tank. And this one seems empty. Izuku said only to be corrected by Tsu. Not it's not he's right there. 
Su said pointing to a corner of the tank where Izuku focused not seeing anything until there was a slight movement of the sand only for that sand to actually be the camouflaged arm of the octopus. Whoa that's awesome how'd you spot that Su? Izuku asked as Su shrugged. I have a talent for spotting things like that. Su said as they continued on. So you're heading to Island, aren't you? Su said catching Izuku off guard. Yeah I'm excited about getting to train with David Shield. He's a genius in support technology so I know he can help me get a better grip on my power. Izuku said to which Tsu nodded. I'm glad you're looking forward to it. She whispered before turning to Izuku. I want to give you something as a going away present. Izuku raised a brow but followed after Tsu. She led him to the restrooms before looking back and forth and then pulled him into the ladies room. Izuku blushed heavily looking around finding the room empty before Tsu had them enter the last stall locking the door as she sat Izuku on the toilet. Tsu what are you doing? Izuku whispered harshly as Tsu got on her knees reaching for his pants undoing them in a flash. I thought I told you Midoriya. I'm giving you a going away present. Like I told you I'm straightforward and I've thought about this for a while before deciding to go through with it. She said as her tongue entered his open fly and wrapped around his pulling it free from its cloth confines. Izuku moaned loudly before hearing the door open to the lady's room and covered his mouth as Sue's tongue writhed around it. She looked up into his eyes with a grin. You should be quiet Midoriya we don't want to get caught. She whispered as she swallowed her tongue along with his into her mouth. Izuku gripped the bar on the inside of the stall as Su's head bobbed on his while Izuku tried to keep his voice from leaking out. Su made sure to savor his taste and scent it clouded her mind and all she could think of was going faster. Izuku threw his head back as he felt his climax burst forth into Su's mouth. He flopped against the toilet he was sitting on as he heard the door shut to the bathroom. He looked at Su as she pulled off his now flaccid member not a drop of his seed present on it. TT Su what were you thinking? He asked as Su licked her lips taking in his taste fully. The saltiness and how thick it was even after swallowing it still felt as if her tongue was coated in his cream. Ever since Mina showed us that video of you two I haven't been able to stop thinking about you. Did you not like it? She asked in an uncharacteristic shy voice. Izuku sighed as he arranged himself. No it was probably the best I've had but that list isn't extensive. Izuku said blushing as he watched Sue reach under her skirt slipping down her panties about to slide onto his lap. Izuku had to stop her. Sue if that's what you want I'm not against it but I don't want our first to be in the bathroom of an aquarium. Izuku said before sliding two fingers into Tsu's tight. But fair is fair and I owe you for before. He whispered in Tsu as his finger dove into her folds back and forth the sounds of her sopping cunt echoing in the stall. Sue clutched onto Izuku's shoulders to keep herself standing as she panted against his ear her tongue steadily drooping from her mouth as Izuku played her like a fiddle. I Izuku Tsu moaned her knees quivering before completely giving out as Tsu fell into Izuku's lap her orgasm racking her body with waves of pleasure. Izuku smiled holding Tsu against him as she shivered from the aftershocks of her orgasm. I hope that was alright. Izuku spoke as Tsu pulled back. It was more than alright. Tsu said pecking him on the lips before rising to her feet and pulling her panties back into place. We should go while it's empty. Tsu said walking out with Izuku following right after her once he'd gotten himself together. Well that was certainly unexpected but not at all disappointing. Izuku thought to himself as he and Tsu slipped out of the restroom before rejoining hands as they continued to explore aquarium. Izuku stood in front of Toru's home he carried with him a bouquet of flowers for her. Alright well this should be interesting. He'd been to Toru's house a couple times but this would be his first time meeting her parents. I can do this I can do this. He said as the door opened and out came Toru. He looked at the floating jean shorts and pink t-shirt with an arched brow. Toru, he asked as Toru's voice rang out. The one and only Izuku are you expecting someone else? She asked as Izuku shook his head. And I know it's not that well I was just expecting your parents. He asked looking around as Toru giggled. Oh no my parents are out of town for today. My dad is on a business trip and my mom decided to take a spa trip while he was gone. Toru explained as she grabbed hold of the flowers sniffing them as she looked at Izuku. Thanks for the flowers Izuku. She said as she grabbed hold of his hand pulling him into her home. Izuku looked around at the decor. Oh um Izuku I hope it's not a disappointment or anything but I was hoping we could you know stay in today for our day. Toru asked setting the flowers down as Izuku looked at her. Um yeah sure Toru I don't mind. He said not too worried about it they could always go to the movies another day. Great have a seat Izuku I'll get the snacks. Toru said as she went into the kitchen and Izuku took a seat on the couch noticing the lack of pictures. Well I guess that's to be expected Toru's not very photogenic. He said with a chuckle as Toru came in the room with a plate of cookies and drinks that she sat down between them before sitting next to Izuku. I baked these myself, Toru said as she picked up one of the cookies. Say ah, Toru said as Izuku blushed. T Toru that's not necessary I can feed myself. Izuku said holding his hands up as Toru seemingly pouted. You don't want me to. She asked with a wavering voice that could convince a volcano not to erupt. 
And no, it's not that I don't want you to it's um I'd much rather feed you Izuku said immediately questioning his judgment on saying such a thing. Toru began fidgeting as her hand dropped before leaning forward and placing the cookie in his hand. Yeah, Toru said and apparently opening her mouth as Izuku lifted the cookie in his hand before placing a hand on her cheek to be able to guide the cookie into her open mouth. He felt Toru's teeth grabbed hold of the cookie before pulling it into her mouth and then grabbing hold of Izuku's hand and licking his fingers clean of crumbs. Izuku's eyes widened at this as not a single inch of his index finger was spared. He watched his finger disappear into Toru's mouth before reappearing with a light coating of saliva. So good, Toru whispered as Izuku withdrew his hand and looked at Toru. We will you are the one who made them, he said swallowing and taking a gulp of his juice. In an effort to change the subject Izuku brought up their upcoming internships. So Toru where are you going for your internships? Toru sat back some as she sighed. Well I'll be interning under Ms. Joke at her agency, Toru said before looking at Izuku. But I bet you probably will be under one of the top 10 heroes hun. She asked thinking she'd be seeing Izuku on TV next to Best Genist or Edshot. Izuku shook his head. No actually I'll be going to I Island for my internship under David Shield. Izuku said still having some trouble believing he'd be interning under such a huge name. Toru pounced on Izuku hugging him. No don't say that you have to stay here I don't want you to go Toru shouted as she looked at Izuku who was floored at the outpour of emotion. Toru Tuam coming back I promise he said holding her close as Toru squeezed him. I'm not going to leave you Toru you're my girlfriend after all. He said as he looked down at Toru before ing her holding her against him as she looped her arms around his neck before breaking apart. You promise? She asked twirling his hair with her finger. I promise Toru. I love you. He said as Toru blushed. Prove it. Toru said causing Izuku to his head to the side. I'm okay but how? Izuku asked as he watched Toru stand up and then slowly slip down her shorts revealing her pink panties before those two were slid off. Izuku's eyes widened as he stared at well nothing but he knew what was right in front of him. You got to feed me a cookie Izuku I want to feed you mine now. Toru said placing her hands on her flower and spreading it before the green haired boy. Izuku swallowed looking up at Toru who stepped closer. He could feel the heat coming from her as her scent invaded his nose. If this is what you want Toru who am I to say no? Izuku said leaning forward and capturing Toru's with his mouth ing on her taut puffy lips as his tongue made its way up and down her slit. Toru yelped placing her hands in Izuku's hair as he explored her cavern. I Izuku she moaned leaning forward some as pleasure racked her body. She'd wanted to try this since she'd watched Izuku go to town on Mina. The look on Mina's face said it all and Toru wanted that for herself now but she never expected it to feel this good. Toru could feel her orgasm crest over her as she held onto Izuku's green locks as her juices washed down his face dripping to the floor as Izuku pulled himself from her cunt panting heavily as he looked up at Toru who fell into his lap her breaths heavy. Chu didn't know it would feel that good. Toru said before noticing a large bulge pressing against her sensitive. She shivered practically feeling the heat of Izuku's member against her. Toru adjusted herself as she reached between her legs and undid Izuku's belt pulling his member free and staring at the pulsing beast. Toru bit her lip as she stared down at it before locking eyes with Izuku who wore a complete poker face. You don't have to if you're not ready Toru. Izuku said placing a hand on her cheek and feeling her nod. Thanks for that Izuku but no I'm ready and have been for a while now. I always knew I wanted you to be my first. She said reaching underneath one of the pillows on the couch and pulling out a single condom. I hope you don't mind. Toru said as Izuku smiled at her and shook his head. Of course not Toru I'm happy as long as you are. Izuku said as he watched Toru tear open the condom taking it out and began to slide it down his member watching the rubber stretch down his length. Toru lifted above his member before slowly sliding herself down his length much like she had done the condom until she too was fully wrapped around him. Toru moaned as she felt his entirety inside her. You are so big Izuku. She moaned as Izuku laid his hands on her hips and smiled before gently thrusting up into her. Toru yelped at the unexpected movement. Izuku wrapped his arms around her pulling her close to him as he bounced Toru on his lap. The invisible girl was prey to Izuku as he plunged into her depths again and again filling her with his girth. Toru grasped the back of Izuku's head leaning forward to lock lips with her man. Their tongues moving back and forth inside the enclosed space for what seemed like hours before the two had to come up for air with Izuku not breaking stride as he pounded her young cunt. Izuku had been on the edge for some time after having eaten out Toru he could feel his throbbing with need and now there was no need to hold back as he increased his speed driving himself into Toru and erupting inside the condom. Toru threw her head back giving a strangled cry as Izuku dove even deeper into her forcing her into her own orgasm before the invisible girl fell forward her hair draped across her face as she panted against Izuku her chest heaving against his. She could feel Izuku's heartbeat as if it was thundering in her own chest right next to her own. On weak legs Toru managed to pull herself off of Izuku shuddering as she felt the bulbous tip of his condom pop free of her looking at the large amount of semen within. 
That was incredible, Toru said as she sat next to Izuku on the couch hearing the boy chuckle next to her. Took the words right out of my mouth. He whispered, leaning close to her ending her bare shoulder causing goosebumps to rise as Toru giggled. Glad you agree you should get washed up while I take care of things in here. She said getting to her feet and gathering her clothes before leading Izuku to the bathroom where he could dispose of the condom and shower. As Toru readied the shower and moved out of the way to allow Izuku's access she was surprised when he pulled her inside with him. We should both clean up don't you think? He asked as he and Toru stood under the shower head the invisible girl blushing the entire time. Okay, she whispered. Achako Yuraka stood in front of the mirror in her room looking at herself. She wore a black tank top with running pants patterned to look like dragon scales. Her hair was tied back in a ponytail as she left her room putting on her shoes as she left. Her parents were already gone at this point having to get another early start on their current construction project. She exited her home as she began the jog from her apartment on the bottom floor all the way to the top of her apartment building. She'd done this many times and it was starting to get easier she was only slightly winded when she arrived at the roof of her building and there standing in front of the sunrise was Izuku Midoriya her boyfriend. Her face grew hot at thinking this like it did every time she didn't think it would ever stop bringing a smile to her face or heat to her cheek. She watched him stretch as the sunlight outlined his muscles, the way they contorted under his skin showing off all that potential. It took all her concentration to remember to breathe as she walked up to him. Hearing her footsteps Izuku turned and smiled at her. Morning Achako, he said and hearing her name spoken by him made her heart flutter. H. Hey Deku, she said smiling as she began to stretch alongside him. This was their routine for the past week leading up to their internships. After losing to Bakugu Achako realized that she needed more combat training and had decided to intern under Gunhead in the hopes of learning more about fighting but she didn't want to go in blind so she'd gone to her boyfriend and ask him to train her and he'd agree. Achako came up from her leg stretches and turned to Izuku who was tying a blindfold around his eyes. Deku what are you doing? She asked as Izuku smiled at her having finished securing the blindfold. Well this will be our last time training until our internships end so I figured I'd give you a bit of a final exam. If you can land one hit on me within three minutes I'll give you whatever you want. He said clicking the stopwatch on his wrist before taking his stance. Achako looked at Izuku and nodded. Alright then Deku I won't hold back Achako said as she took a stance and then advanced on him slowly trying to stay as quiet as possible before striking with a straight punch to Izuku's chest like he'd taught her but apparently that was too predictable as Izuku sidestepped her attack. Achako stepped past him regaining her balance as she turned to face him again. Once more Achako advanced on him and threw a sweep to his legs which he avoided dancing back but Achako capitalized on this stepping forward and throwing another punch this time Izuku was forced to block her attack rather than simply dodge. Fit Achako press your advantage. He instructed her as he spun around her. She recognized this particular movement as the tornado stance that Ajiro had told them about but Achako was undeterred as she continued on her attacks being avoided or blocked but just as time was about to run out Achako surprised Izuku. As he went to circle to Achako's left she stepped forward blocking his escape and went to slam her palm against his stomach. Acting on instinct Izuku dropped into a sweep dropping Achako on her butt. Sorry Achako you caught me off guard and I got serious for a second. He said snatching off his blindfold as he inspected her for injuries. Oh man I thought I had you there I was sure I had your pattern down. Achako pouted as Izuku smiled petting her head. You did if I was anybody else you would have broken their rhythm and your attack would have landed. I think I owe you a reward. What would you like? Izuku asked sitting down across from her. Achako blushed at Izuku's praise feeling him pat her head. Two do have one thing I want. Achako admitted as she slid closer to Izuku her knees pressing against his as her eyes stared into his. Three want you Izuku arched a brow at her demand and smiled shyly. Well I Achako leaned against Izuku as she wrapped her arms around his neck. Please Izuku I want you to make me yours before our internships. Achako whispered before Ing Izuku feeling him pull her against him with his strong arms. She could feel his heartbeat against her own as the two just fell into one another. It's not so much about the but I do want that too but I just want to feel close to you. I see how you and Mina interact even though you're not doing anything special you just have this feeling about you. Like the two of you know what the other is thinking. I want that connection as well. Izuku petted Achako's head before standing up and lifting her into his arms like a princess. Achako's face exploded in red as she held on to Izuku. To be honest I wanted to do this with you today Achako. You've been on my mind a lot Achako and I wanted to share this with you too. He whispered as he carried her down the stairs to her apartment letting her unlock the door without putting her down and carried her into her home and as soon as the door shut the two embraced in another with Izuku setting Achako down on her bed. He stood up looking down at Achako her blushing face those shy eyes. Everything about her served to enhance her already startling beauty. 
Achako sat up moving forward and grasping the hem of Izuku's shirt sliding it up slowly and planting ease along his abs until the shirt popped over the top of his messy green hair. Izuku then returned the favor by sliding down her running pants and panties until they pulled on the floor around her feet. His eyes were drawn to her slit in the light dusting of brown hair atop it. Achako blushed at this covering her eyes before she felt Izuku pull her hands away staring into her eyes. Don't look away Achako. I want to see all of you and I want you to see all of me. Izuku stated as Achako nodded. Izuku took her top off revealing the pink and black sports bra she wore and soon removed that as well. The cool air of her room causing her nipples to harden or maybe it was the arousal coursing through her veins as she reached for Izuku's shorts sliding them down to reveal the prize within. Achako gasped coming face to face with Izuku's member the way it pulsed in front of her face she could practically feel its desire to be inside her as she slowly reached her hand out gently wrapping her fingers around its girth and hearing Izuku moan in pleasure. Achako swallowed feeling the intense heat against her palm. Achako reached under her bed pulling free a roll of condoms and tearing one off. She'd been absolutely terrified buying these and even more so bringing them home and hiding them. It felt as if everybody was staring at her on the way home knowing what was in her back. Taking a deep breath Achako opened the condom and then slid it down Izuku's hearing him groan once again. Th there. She whispered sliding back onto her bed and slowly spreading her legs in front of Izuku and then with two fingers spread her lower lips revealing her depths to him. Tuam ready. She said as Izuku leaned forward placing a chaste on her lips as he slowly entered her pressing forward all the way until he was fully sheathed inside her. Achako panted as she wrapped her arms around Izuku's back marveling at how broad it was as Izuku slid free of her and it was probably the saddest thing she'd ever felt. Feeling him leave her like that made it seem to her that she was hollow now completely empty as if he'd taken everything with him and then it was returned to her when he thrust back into her. Achako sighed in relief never wanting to feel that emptiness again. Two might get addicted to you Izuku. Achako whispered to him as he smiled leaning closer to her. Guess that makes us even then. You've been on my mind since the first time I met you. He said thrusting back and forth into her his rhythm steady but oh so pleasurable each motion pushing her closer to the edge. Izuku twam gonna Achako shouted as Izuku captured her lips with his own as she came swallowing her scream as her juices ran out along the sides of Izuku's. He pulled back looking at the panting form of Yuraka beneath him as he pulled free of her cunt watching the filled tip of the condom pop free of her letting loose another shudder through Achako's body. Izuku pulled the condom off as he held Achako against him snuggling her. I wish you could stay. Achako whispered as Izuku shook his head. One day maybe but don't worry I'll stay as long as I can I promise. He setting her forehead as Achako began to nod off. I love you Izuku. Was the last thing Achako said before falling asleep. I love you too Achako. It was later that day Izuku had returned home showering and spending most of the day packing and then double checking everything he packed before leaving on his final mission before his flight tomorrow. He had called Mina who was currently laughing in his ear as he walked to his next destination. My oh my you have been quite the busy bee haven't you Midori? Mina said laying back on her bed listening to Izuku's nervous laugh. I mean bathroom play with Tsu going all the way with both Toru and Achako and yet you don't even sound winded. Your stamina is amazing. I don't think even the six of us can handle you. Mina said biting her lip. And no Mina I think the world of all of you I wouldn't think of going after another girl. He whispered into his phone not wanting to draw attention to himself. Well be that as it may Midori life sometimes throws us something we don't want but might need just keep an open mind alright. Mina said rolling onto her side as Izuku sighed. Are you sure about this Mina I could come see you and we could go do something. I don't want you to be the only one left out. He said feeling bad after all the hard work Mina put in. See what I mean you even want a piece of me before you go your insatiable Mina laughed before getting serious. Don't worry Midori I'm fine besides this is kind of my punishment for taking such a big lead before the other girls but I do intend to be paid in full when you get back my dear Midori. Mina said with a seductive chuckle as Izuku nodded. Okay Mina I'll call you when I get to my island bye. He said hanging up as he stood in front of a large home and putting away his phone pressed the doorbell. It was soon opened by a woman with black hair and glasses wearing a long sleeve shirt and dark blue skirt. Yes can I help you? She asked looking Izuku up and down. Izuku bowed before speaking. Yes my name is Izuku Midori I'm the class representative for class 1A I'm here to see it if he's in. Izuku explained as recognition dawned in the woman's eyes. Midori you say. Come and come and Tenya has said a lot about you thank you for looking after my son. Mrs. Ida said bowing to Izuku who waved his hands. Oh no need for that truth be told Ida probably helps me more than I do him. He said rubbing the back of his head and chuckling. Mrs. Ida smiled. Yes well Tenya is in his room down the hall last door on the left. Go on ahead I'll bring you boys some snacks and refreshments. She said heading into the kitchen as Izuku made his way to Ida's room and knocked on the door having it be opened by Ida in a white t-shirt and blue shorts. Midoriya what are you doing here? Tenya asked as Izuku looked him in the eye. 
I'll be heading to thy island tomorrow so I won't be there to see you guys off on your internship so I wanted to talk to you face to face before then if that's alright. Izuku asked as Tenya looked down at him before stepping aside letting Izuku into his room shutting the door before the two sat down on the floor across from one another. Ada's room was much as Izuku had expected it everything in order not a speck of dust to be seen. The shelves were full of books organized in what Izuku assumed was alphabetical but knowing Ada it probably wasn't that simple. Even Ada's bed was perfectly made Izuku could probably cut himself on the tight corners. You could have called. Tenya said somberly drawing Izuku form his looking around as the greenette shook his head. If I did you would have told me nothing was wrong and it was unnecessary for me to come and we both know that's not true. Ada you are my friend my best friend and I know what happened to your brother is eating you alive. Now I can't say I know what you're feeling because I have no siblings but I do know the anger you feel at the hero killer. How can you possibly know that? Tenya shouted as Izuku sat there unmoved by the outburst. Remember when I told you that I couldn't help someone right in front of me? Izuku asked as Ida nodded. That person was a thug killed by Stain right in front of me. I know he was a criminal but he didn't have to die. As a hero in training I strive to save everyone. If there's even the smallest chance that a person can be saved I have to try that is a hero's job which is why I'm here Izuku said pounding his fist on the floor right before the door opened revealing Tenya's mother with a tray of drinks and chips. Mrs. Ida looked between her son and this boy sensing this was a very tense conversation going on but before she could ask Tenya stood up taking the tray from her. Thank you mother I'll bring this out when we're done. He said dismissively and so Mrs. Ida left. Tenya sat the tray down between himself and Izuku. You're going to go after him Ada and I don't want to see you hurt or killed. I want to save you from yourself. Izuku said taking a glass of juice and draining it all at once. So what should I do Izuku not avenge my brother's attack? He can't walk anymore because of that monster am I to just leave it at that? Tenya asked his blue eyes staring into Izuku's green ones. For now yes. I have fought with Stain and he uses techniques similar to mine but better because he has more experience. You won't beat him Ada so if you do find him because I know you're probably still going after him just remember. A hero saves people. It's not about punishing the guilty it's about protecting the innocent. I hope you remember that. Izuku said standing up and looking at Ida. Please be safe and good luck on your internship. Izuku said leaving Tenya there in his room as he left the house. Thank you for having me Mrs. Ida it was lovely meeting you and sorry for showing up unannounced. Izuku apologized before leaving the two Ida to their thoughts. Izuku and All Might were being ushered through a secret exit so as not to be bombarded by a crowd of All Might fans. They stepped out into the island proper seeing crowds of people walking around. While this is Island, Izuku said looking around at all the people and several well-known heroes. Izuku wore a blue t-shirt with a red and a white M on the front with blue jean pants and his red shoes. He carried with him a large duffel bag over his shoulder. He saw a guy who was skating but rather than have wheels on his feet it seemed like he was suspended several inches above the ground a woman was walking along before seeming to receive a call and amazingly slid her sleeve back to show a call screen on her forearm. Her whole arm was one of the most realistic prosthetics Izuku had ever seen. Indeed young Midoriya a man-made island created so inventors and scientists could push the bounds of what's possible without endangering the world at large. All Might explained as he looked around and spotted a car with a man in front holding up a sign with Izuku's name on it. All Might thought it best that they go under Izuku's name otherwise there would have been a crowd around the car waiting for him to show up. All Might wore a grey t-shirt with green cargo pants and black boots. He carried with him a small overnight bag dwarfed in his giant fist. Let's hurry young Midori I'm kind of hard to miss so the sooner we get in the car the better. All Might said as both he and Izuku made their way to the car as quickly as possible before anyone took notice. Once inside the hero and his protege sat down looking at the driver of the car. Hello All Might sir my name is Samuel Abraham I am Dr. Shield's assistant. It's a pleasure to meet you sir. Sam said cheerfully. Sam was an older gentleman with blonde hair dressed in a business suit. Thank you for picking us up Samuel we really appreciate it. All Might said as Sam smiled. Not a problem sir. When David told me that you were the one I was picking up I was overjoyed to do so. I'm taking you to David right now. He's at his lab but I'm sure you could have guessed that already. Sam said as they pulled into the parking lot of said lab. All Might and Izuku followed Sam into the multilevel building where they boarded an elevator and began riding to the top of the laboratory and coming out into a small lab and there at the computer sat David Shield. The man had brown hair and glasses with a goatee. He wore a lab coat but underneath was a dark blue shirt grey jeans and blue sneakers. He stood up with a smile as he greeted All Might with a hug and patting his back as All Might reciprocated. David's been too long old friend how are you? All Might asked patting the man on the back. It's so good to see you Toshi I've been well. David said stepping back before locking eyes with Midoriya. And your Izuku Midoriya nice to meet you. David said offering his hand to Izuku who shook it happily. Yes I am and it is an honor to meet you Mr. Shield. Thank you so much for this opportunity being able to work with the man who created all of All Might's equipment and suits is so amazing. 
Izuku said bowing to the man. David chuckled. I should be thanking you Izuku. I've been watching your time during the sports festival over and over again thinking of how I could help you. You are quite the interesting young man into a scientist that's worth its weight in gold. As David said this the elevator dinged and out came a blonde woman with sea blue eyes wearing a white short sleeve dress shirt a plaid bow in her long hair and grey capri pants and brown boots. As she exited the elevator she looked at All Might and leaped towards him. Uncle Might the girl called out as All Might caught her with ease and spun her around for good measure. Melissa it's so good to see you you've grown into a beautiful young woman haven't you? All Might said smiling as he set the girl on her feet who smiled widely at him before standing next to David Izuku took notice of the resemblance immediately. This is my daughter Melissa and Melissa this is All Might student Izuku Midori. He's here for a week-long internship. David stated as Melissa offered her hand to the younger boy. Nice to meet you Izuku. Melissa said as Izuku when she shook hands. Likewise Melissa. Izuku said. At the mention of Izuku's internship Melissa turned to David with a look of confusion. But dad aren't you supposed to be going to a meeting with the board executives tomorrow? Melissa questioned as David's face fell and looked back at All Might. Tuam sorry Toshi I just got the call this morning and by then you and Izuku were already on your way here. There was no time for me to let you know. All Might also looked crestfallen at this news. He thought he'd finally done something teacher-like for Izuku by arranging for David to see Izuku in the sports festival and want to mentor him. No it's my fault David I know you're a busy man. I shouldn't have imposed on you. All Might said apologetically. Izuku for his part just stood there. He was at a loss. He'd been looking forward to learning under David but now he'd have to go back home with nothing to show for it. What if I handled his internship dad? Melissa asked catching everyone's attention. What are you saying Melissa? David asked as Melissa stepped closer to her father. I mean Uncle Might and Izuku came all this way and for your help we can't just do nothing and I'm pretty familiar with experimenting with quirks. I could take over his internship and help him in your place at least until you come back. Melissa said looking at her father. Melissa this isn't one of your school projects. Izuku here is training to be a hero and needs more than I think you can give. David said rubbing his chin as Melissa puffed out her cheeks in disappointment before turning to Izuku and grabbing both his hands and hers. Izuku what about you you are the client after all. What do you think? She asked her blue eyes begging him to say yes. Izuku cast an eye to All Might finding him looking in the opposite direction refusing to make eye contact with him. Forgive me young Midoriya but this is a decision you should make on your own. All Might thought to himself as Izuku gave his answer. Too like to continue my internship with Melissa Mr. Shield. I believe that if she's half the scientist you are I'll learn more than I ever could on my own. Please allow Melissa to help me. Izuku said bowing as he and Melissa both felt the heavy palms of All Might on their shoulders. Looks like you're outvoted Dave. All Might said with a grin as David sighed. Very well Melissa is right. As the client Izuku has final say. Melissa I'm transferring Izuku's internship over to you. There are notes in my lab for you to look through for ideas going forward and feel free to call me if you get hung up on something. I'm also interested to see how far Izuku can develop. He said with a smile before hearing All Might give a large cough. David cast his eyes to his friend before looking at Sam Melissa and Izuku he gave a smile. Well don't just stand there Melissa I'm sure Izuku would like to get started as soon as possible. Sam why don't you take Izuku's bag to his room and then feel free to take the day off I won't be doing any more work today just prepare to leave in the morning. Sam gave a nod as he pushed the button for the elevator and stepped in with Izuku and Melissa before the door closed behind the trio. Once the door closed there was a large puff of smoke signaling All Might's transformation into his true form. The hero collapsed into a nearby chair. Thanks for that Dave. I'm not sure how much longer I could have held that form. All Might said panting a little as David poured him a glass of water handing it to the hero. Your time has decreased again. Your power seems to be fading even faster than I predicted. David said as All Might nodded. All Might accepted the glass and drained it in one go before speaking. Yes this is why I was desperate to bring Izuku here. You were a big factor in making me the symbol of peace. We would spend days testing out my powers and your inventions I was hoping you could do the same for him. I have the utmost confidence that Izuku will be the next symbol of peace. David smiled. He seems like a good kid. I can see why you chose him as your successor. I'm sorry I can't be the one to help him but even though I was hesitant I know Melissa will help him to the best of her abilities. David said with a proud smile. I see a lot of you in her Dave so I'm not worried. Now what's this about a meeting with the executive board of Island? All Might said as David waved his hand. Oh it's just routine every time I invent something I go to the board and have them approve it for public use. As one of the faces of Island it's my job to set a good example so I follow a bit stricter code of conduct when it comes to my inventions. But this new creation will make everything that came before it obsolete. I build it with you in mind Toshi. David said smiling as All Might arched a brow. I'm guessing you can't tell me what it is though? All Might asked as David nodded. That would be correct but don't worry once it's been approved you'll be the first to use it until then mum's the word. 
David said placing a finger against his All Might chuckled before nodding his head. I'll be taking your bags to your room Mr. Midoriya here's your keycard. Sam said as he exchanged Izuku's luggage with the room keycard. Thank you Mr. Abraham. Izuku stated as the older man left the two teenagers alone in the elevator. Immediately once the door closed Melissa gave a shout of glee as she jumped up and down in the elevator before turning to Izuku. Thank you thank you thank you she said shaking his hands before ing him on the cheek. My dad would have never let me do this without your say so. I really appreciate you going on along with me. Melissa said as she composed herself but she couldn't get rid of the large smile on her face just as Izuku couldn't escape the blush on his face. You're a welcome. Besides you're helping me just as much if you hadn't spoken up I don't know what I would have done. Izuku said with a smile. I look forward to working you Melissa. The boy said as the elevator stopped on the basement floor. Me too Izuku now this is our underground testing facility. We test all sorts of things down here but for the duration of your stay this will be our training facility. She said walking over to a computer desk where there was a multitude of papers. It was a large room about the size of a warehouse and it was divided into sections with different equipment residing in each. Where Melissa and he were there was a monitoring room with computers and screens littered with notes charts and diagrams. These must be the notes dad was talking about. Here is a coup I'll look these over while you change into this. Melissa said holding out a folded body suit to him. This is a vital suit. The inner lining of the suit has monitors woven in that record your heartbeat pressure etc. Izuku looked at the suit and nodded before looking around for a changing room not seeing one. Ah um, Melissa where should I change? Izuku asked partially bringing Melissa out of reading her father's notes. Oh you can change over there. She pointed to a small room in the corner. Izuku walked over to the changing room and stripped down to his underwear before pulling on the suit. Melissa looked up from the notes as Izuku returned with the vital suit in place. I'm ready Melissa. Izuku said excited to get started noticing the blush on Melissa's face as she shook her head. She'd seen many people in these suits but not many cut quite the figure Izuku did or maybe they did and Izuku was the only one she'd taken notice of. The boy had quite the physique she knew he was strong but she had no idea he was so picturesque. Ooh yeah let's get this started. She said taking a look at her father's notes. He had a list of tests he was going to put Izuku through and the first was a strength test obviously. She'd watched the sports festival alongside her father as well and she'd seen some of the incredible feats of strength Izuku had accomplished. Melissa grabbed a tablet from the desk and led Izuku to a horizontal bar above a bench with two machines on either side. Izuku looked at the tablet. To him it looked like an ordinary pane of glass but as Melissa turned it on it came alive with data. That's amazing. Izuku noted pointing at the tablet. Melissa looked at the tablet and nodded. I suppose it is. I work with these so much I forget they're not that common outside the island. Melissa said showing Izuku how it worked before getting back to the test. The bar was set in a track that terminated about several feet above the bench. This is our bench press. Instead of actual weights all we have to do is type in the weight we want and the machines on either side create resistance equal to that. It's really convenient when you have people like you and Uncle Might who can lift insane amounts without flooding this place with things of that way. Izuku nodded looking at the machines and smiled at the futuristic setup of Islan. So how about we start with a haftin? Melissa asked Izuku as he lay down on the bench and gripped the bar as he heard Melissa type in the weight. All right when you're ready. She said pulling up Izuku's vitals on her tablet. Izuku activated his full cowl and pushed upward. It felt as if the weight was hardly there as he pushed the bar upward rather quickly causing it to clang noisily against the top of the bar's track. Melissa's eyes widened as she took note of Izuku's vitals. It was like his body tapped into a massive pool of energy that flooded his body. Izuku's entire body was being overclocked in an instant shattering the limiters in his brain with ease. Sorry I didn't think it'd feel so light. Izuku commented as Melissa giggled. No no that's great it means we can jump forward more. Let's say three tons this time. Melissa explained as Izuku nodded and once again pushed the bar with ease. Melissa wrote this down and steadily began increasing the weight with a final result of 60 tons though that would have to be tested again tomorrow when he was rested to see if it was from fatigue or his outright limit. Izuku sat sweating some as Melissa brought him a towel and some water. Once you're ready we'll move over to the treadmill. Sure thing Melissa. Izuku said wiping sweat from his forehead as he drained half the bottle of water before standing up and proceeding to the treadmill. Much like with the weight machine they steadily scaled Izuku's speed up until he seemed to cap out at 150 mph. You are really incredible Izuku I've rarely seen records like this. Melissa said entering the data into her tablet. One more test should be good for today. Melissa said as she walked over to a target on the wall. This is similar to the arcade game that measures how much force your punches have so go ahead and give it your best shot no holding back. Melissa said as she moved behind a walled petition with a window where she could watch the testing. Izuku walked up to the target rolling his right shoulder before activating his snake cowl darkening his right arm. 
Melissa looked down at her tablet expecting the same incredible energy readings from before but was astounded by what she saw as Izuku then threw his fist back as far as possible stretching it across the room and then slinging it forward. The sleeve of the vital suit tore under the force of Izuku's punch as he slammed it into the target there was a large shockwave as the target shattered around Izuku's fist. Melissa looked at the tablet and saw the last reading before the target was destroyed and gawped at it. Izuku rounded the corner hurriedly looking at Melissa. Sorry I'm so sorry Melissa I didn't think the meter would break and I tore the sleeve of your suit I'm really sorry. Izuku said nervously as Melissa held the tablet to her face shaking slightly before turning to Izuku and holding out the amount of force Izuku put into the target before it was destroyed. It read 9999 across the board. You maxed out the target's force reading Melissa said looking at the reading again just to make sure before laughing. Nobody else has done that except Uncle Mike this is. Amazing you're amazing Izuku I can't believe this. When you used that power just now it was like your entire body was overwritten to something new. I have never seen anything like this before Melissa said smiling as Izuku returned her smile awkwardly. So that's good then. Izuku asked as Melissa nodded her head excitedly. That's more than good Izuku this is groundbreaking. I can't wait for tomorrow. I'm going to spend all night coming up with a litany of tests and regiments. Izuku felt an odd sensation listening to Melissa go on about her tests and other experiments she had planned for him. Is this what it feels like for everybody around me when I'm talking about heroes and their powers? Izuku thought to himself as Melissa came out of her rant. We're done for today Izuku get some rest and prepare for an enlightening internship. Also bring your hero suit I want to have a look at it. I'm sure that's it's not going to be able to keep up with you after this internship so I'll work on it as well. No point in improving yourself if you're going to go into the field with faulty equipment, Melissa said as Izuku nodded walking away from the girl and getting dressed in his original clothes and heading back up the elevator. He looked at Melissa as the door shut. She was completely absorbed into her work now much like he was when he was making his hero analysis books. It wasn't often that Izuku felt such a familiar connection with someone. The closest he got was with Tenya but here with Melissa he could feel something deeper like they were truly kindred spirits. As Izuku was about to enter his room the door next to his opened showing All Might in his true form. Hey how'd it go with Melissa? All Might asked as Izuku opened his door the pro hero following him. She's really great All Might. Melissa is passionate about helping me in science it seems. I know I can learn a lot from this internship. Izuku said as All Might nodded proudly. I knew you two would hit off. Melissa has the same passion for science and helping people that you do about being a hero. I'm sure in the future you two will have a great relationship. All Might said cupping his chin and nodding internally celebrating this good news as Izuku's face turned bright red. Uh, All Might www what are you talking about? I don't like her like that I mean I like her but I owe uh, you know um Izuku devolved into incoherent babbling as All Might held up his hands. Whoa 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 there kid I wasn't saying anything like that just that with experience between you and the future she could be the one building your suits and support items. Just saying she's as brilliant as David is now and much more than he was at her age. I know she'll go far. All Might said standing up and placing both hands on Izuku's shoulders. I'll be leaving tomorrow morning back to Japan so from here on out it's just you and Melissa. Work hard and come back stronger. All Might said as Izuku gave a determined grin. Of course All Might I will get stronger Izuku said as he and All Might shook hands with the pro returning to his room and Izuku turning in for the night eager to begin his training in earnest. Izuku walked into his room and grabbed his Mark II hero suit crafted by his brother Donnie. Apparently it was a lot more durable than the last and with his new abilities in mind had been modified to accommodate them. Truth be told Izuku hadn't actually worn this suit since Donnie had given it to him. He'd been hoping to use it during his internship, which still might be a possibility. He and Melissa had just returned from seeing off All Might and Mr. Shield. And once they'd returned Melissa was eager to resume his testing which was right up Izuku's alley. The young boy bounded out of his room to the elevator riding it down to the testing area he saw Melissa surrounded by a small platoon of books. Her blonde head popped up from the stacks smiling at Izuku happily behind her glasses as she stood up nearly knocking over some of the tomes. Oh Izuku I didn't expect you quite so fast. But I suppose I should have considering your tests yesterday. She said with an awkward giggle before seeing the case in his hands. Is that your hero suit? She asked as Izuku walked up to her presenting the case. Yes my brother Donnie made it for me. Actually this is his second model I kind of destroyed the other one during the USJ attack. Izuku said bashfully still sorry that he damaged Donnie's suit so badly. As Izuku explained about the suit Melissa popped open the case taking note of the suit before going rigid as her finger pointed to a small symbol on the suit. It was a turtle with a D pattern on its shell. You said your brother Donatello made this. Melissa asked in a cold tone that got Izuku's attention immediately. Oh yeah well he's not really my brother I was trained by his father and well they just started calling me their little brother and it stuck. Melissa clenched her teeth with an audible click. Donatello Hamato Melissa said looking at the suit. Melissa Didio you know Donnie. 
Izuku asked as Melissa faced him. Oh yes I do he worked under my father and was always such a show off. But now, now's my chance to get the upper hand Izuku I'm not only going to help you improve your powers, but also improve this suit and send it back to Donatello. She said smiling as she pulled the suit out of the box and hung it up against the wall. Donatello won't even recognize it when I'm done. She said as Izuku chuckled gaining the older girl's attention causing Melissa to blush. Tuam sorry Izuku this is about you not my rivalry with Donatello. She apologized only for Izuku to shake his head. No, no don't worry about it Melissa I'm sure Donnie will appreciate the challenge. And having not only one but two geniuses work on my suit, that's more amazing than I could have ever imagined, so thank you. Izuku said as Melissa blushed running a hand through her hair. You think I'm a genius? She asked as Izuku nodded. How could I not you can do so much with just your mind is that your quirk or something? He asked as Melissa shook her head. I'm quirkless actually. Melissa stated walking past Izuku as if nothing had happened and sat at the computer. Izuku looked at her feeling a dull throb in his chest. I wasn't born with a quirk, but with science I can still help people and make their lives better. Anything is possible if you put your mind to it. That's what I believe anyway. Melissa said as Izuku stood beside her she looked up into his green eyes and saw something that took her breath away. Complete and utter all. I know how you feel Melissa. I got my quirk really late in life, so up to that point I was quirkless, watching people do incredible things while I struggled along. But like you I persevered and trained not giving up on my dream and now here we are Melissa working toward our dreams. Izuku said as he saw tears build up in Melissa's eyes. Oh well, I'm Melissa DD did I say something to hurt your feelings? I'm so sorry Izuku stammered looking around for a tissue or something as Melissa smiled. No you didn't Izuku, it's just you um really have a way with words. If being a hero doesn't work out you should become a motivational speaker you'll make a killing. Melissa said wiping her eyes before replacing her glasses. Well enough of that let's get down to business. I should have asked you this yesterday Izuku, but what exactly do you want to focus on during this internship? Melissa asked pulling out her tablet once more as Izuku stood in front of her. If I had to choose it would be my snake hood. That's my nickname for my red full cow. It's the one I have the least training with. All Might and I went on a small crash course before the sports festival, but that's it. I can use it up close and for moderate maneuverability, but I know I can do so much more. When I fought Namu I was able to shoot my fists out to a distance, but now if I do that I can't keep up and end up missing my target. My fist is moving too fast for me control or direct it. Izuku explained to Melissa who had taken notes during his explanation. I see. Well from the video of your punch yesterday, your fist was moving well beyond the speed of the human eye, so it's no wonder you can't control, and with your arms stretching like that your nerve impulses have much longer to travel. Is there anything else you'd like to delve into? We only have a week so I'd prefer we have very few points of interest to work on, but I'll do my best to try and accommodate all your concerns. Melissa stated as she turned to her tablet scratching her head. Not really that's the only thing I can think of besides raising my strength output. 60 tons is a lot, but I've seen All Might lift a lot more. Izuku said running through a list of All Might's strength feats. I may have something that can help. She said as she led him away from the previous rooms of training to another section of the underground floor. There stood a large room with what appeared to be gun turrets on the walls and ceiling. Izuku swallowed at the menacing room. Don't worry Izuku they're loaded with rubber bullets so you won't be killed, but probably bruised. This area will help you get used to fast moving objects by learning how to dodge bullets you'll be better primed to handle your speedy punches. Melissa informed Izuku who cupped his chin before nodding. I get it. If I can learn to see and react to gunfire it'll help me maintain control over my own body let's do it Melissa Izuku said walking into the room hearing it shut behind him. Melissa then turned on the machine programming how many of the turrets would be active and the speed at which they fire. 420 feet per second should be good. Alright Izuku I'm starting her up in 3, 2 when Melissa turned on the machine and the turrets came to life before zeroing in on Izuku and opening fire. Izuku activated his full cow and began to move only to feel several thuds across his body as he began moving. For a solid minute Izuku was pummeled by the rubber projectiles before Melissa shut the room down. Izuku rubbed his shoulders and arms. Guess that was too fast hun. Melissa said feeling sorry for the boy who shook his head. I just need to get used to it that's all. I think this is a great idea Melissa. Izuku said rolling his shoulders and beginning to stretch before taking his shirt and shoes off kicking them to the far corner of the room and throwing his shirt on top of them. Start it up again please Melissa. Izuku said as he rolled his neck and took a stance. Melissa looked at the boy his face full of excitement. He wanted to conquer this and furthermore she saw no doubt in his face. He knew he would overcome this and she had to admit that look stirred something in her. Right she said going outside and starting the machine again and watching Izuku persevere. He's really something else. She said as the boy dodged around the room getting pelted with rubber bullets. Izuku fell to the ground his chest heaving as the door opened admitting Melissa with a large bottle of water. 
I think that's enough for now Izuku. You've made significant process. Since we've began this training your dodge rate is now at a solid 20% Melissa said raising her tablet to show Izuku the facts and figures that backed up her statement. Izuku sat up hissing a little as he rubbed the series of welts across his body. I can do better Melissa go ahead and start it up again. Izuku said attempting to stand only for Melissa to pull him back to his sitting position. Nope, that's it for today you've been at it for hours and now it's time for a break and something to eat. Now come on you. She said pulling Izuku to his feet and toward the door giving the boy very little time to grab his shoes and shirt which he hastily put on while being dragged behind Melissa. Melissa where are we going? Izuku asked as they rode the elevator up. My dad always says that a balance between work and play is the key to success. You've put in the work so now it's time to play around. Melissa said as they arrived on the ground floor and exited the building into the light of Islan. Izuku covered his eyes as they adjusted to the light of the outside world. Islan may be a place for science, but it's also good for a vacation, Melissa said as she led Izuku down the sidewalk. Izuku looked down at where Melissa held his arm against her body. He was sure she had only done so to keep him from going back to the gun chamber, but now she was happily walking beside him, and he didn't want to make things awkward between them when she was going through all this for his sake, so he took a breath and wrapped his arm around hers. If Melissa minded Izuku didn't see any outward sign of it as they neared an amusement park. Come on Izuku let's have some fun. She said pulling him into the amusement park. What should we try first? Melissa asked looking at Izuku who in turn looked around and spotted a roller coaster called the Almighty Ride. How about that one? Izuku asked pointing to it as Melissa nodded excitedly and the two got in line for the ride making it to the front and being seated in their own red white and blue car of the of the coaster with the safety bars made to look like All Might's signature hair. The ride began moving forward as they began their ascension only to go down the first drop. Izuku threw his hands in the air as he saw Melissa do the same. The car went for a loop-de-loop -loop before corkscrewing out of it up the next incline and then down before curving around back to the entrance. As the car came to a stop All Might's voice rang out of the paw system. You are here Izuku smiled as he stood up helping Melissa out of the car with her falling against him still dizzy. The two fell on the floor with Melissa's ass smothering the young man. Melissa's eyes widened before laughing as she slowly pulled herself off Izuku who had a massive blush on his face as he and Melissa walked away from the ride. The look on your face was priceless Izuku Melissa said wiping a tear from her eye as she looked at the green-haired boy. I'm flattered though really. She said petting his head as she then looked around and spotted something else they could do. Oh what about that? Melissa said pointing to a stone cliff rising out of an arena. The attraction was called Villain Mountain. As the two walked up a woman walked up to the two she had brown hair with matching brown eyes and a pink shirt left open to reveal a navy crop top, pink skirt and a pink star painted on her left cheek. Hello, hello, hello looking to test your skill on Villain Mountain. She asked in a loud voice that could be heard D across the plaza. Izuku looked at Melissa before the girl grabbed his attention again. Don't worry it's really simple all you have to do is defeat the robotic villains and climb your way to the top will time you and announce your time to the crowd. Come on impress your girlfriend with your speed and skills. She said pointing to Melissa who blushed as Izuku began stammering. Hi, she's I mean she's not my before Izuku could finish Melissa gave him a push towards the girl who took his hand and led him to the starting point. Come on Izuku this is your chance to gauge if you've made any progress. I know numbers on a screen don't mean much if you can't see the fruits of your labor, so go for it Melissa said waving him off. Alright start the countdown 3, 2, Wongo realizing he had no choice and that Melissa was actually right he activated his red cowl. Full cowl, snake style. He said his red steam-like energy arced away from him as his hair fanned about on his head before Izuku rocketed forward. He noticed a villain to his left and taking a moment to aim and dial his power down so he could actually see what he was doing. I think 50% should be controllable. Izuku shot his fist forward. It was hard, but he did feel as if he had more control over it knocking a hole in the enemy's chest rather than taking its head off like he planned. Izuku shot his other arm out hooking it onto a cliff pulling himself forward and slamming through his next villain as he whipped his leg out slicing the head off a robot nearby before he continued his way upward destroying robots at a blinding pace until he reached the top of the cliff black smoke billowing around him as his time was total. Total time elapsed. 10 seconds amplifier announced shock not having expected such an amazing time from some kid. Izuku jumped down from the cliff as Melissa ran up to him and hugged him. See I told you, you were improving. Melissa said as Izuku rubbed the back of his head. Yeah I guess you're right Melissa. Izuku said as Amplifier came up to them. That was really something kid. And thanks for that. I needed something flashy to get people interested and nothing gets people excited more than beating a record, so thanks. Amplifier said as she walked away to the growing crowd. So what should we do now? Izuku asked as Melissa held a finger to her chin. Let's do dinner. She said as she led Izuku back to the lab and then up the elevator to the second most floor opening into a living room. This is where me and my dad stay. 
Well neither of us really stays here since we spend most of our time and nights in the lab. Make yourself at home and I'll get dinner started. Melissa said as she entered the kitchen grabbing an apron as Izuku wandered around the living room seeing family photos adorning the walls. He saw several of Melissa growing up and accepting various rewards. In one he even spotted a younger Donatello. There were also some that featured a younger All Might as well. Izuku smiled seeing these rare photos of All Might's personal life. That brought something to mind though. He knew everything about All Might's professional life and career, but almost nothing of the man's personal life. I should really ask him about that. Izuku said when his phone went off in his pocket. He pulled it out seeing a picture of Mina on screen. Izuku answered the phone before hearing Mina shout. Midori you were supposed to call me when you arrived yesterday I've been sitting here on pins and needles a fuming Mina shouted in his ear as Izuku tried to calm her down. As sorry Mina Tuam fine. It's just yesterday I met with Professor Shield and he told me he couldn't do my internship. But thankfully his daughter Melissa took over my internship. She really helped me out there. After that I jumped into some tests and totally forgot to call you. Izuku explained as Mina arched a brow as a smile curved across her face. Oh Professor Shield's daughter offered to take over your internship. You wouldn't have happened to spring some of that Midori charm on her would you? Mina asked smirking as Izuku sputtered on his end. And I know I wouldn't dream of doing something like that. Melissa is a friend. She's really passionate about science. And she's a real genius too. A hard worker and... And she's pretty isn't she? Mina said breaking Izuku's flow of compliments. Poor Midori you don't even know that you've fallen for this girl. Mina thought shaking her head. No she's not. I mean well she is pretty, but that's not what I meant. Mina stopped teasing me Izuku said blushing as Mina giggled in his ear. Yep you've fallen for her Izuku. I can't even see you and I know, and you know what, I think you should go for it. Mina said stalling Izuku whose mind came to a screeching halt as he tried his best to understand the foreign language Mina just spoke. Go for it. What do you mean go for it? He shouted floored at Mina's statement. Is this a test is she seeing if I'll be faithful to her and the other girls? He thought as Mina sighed in his ear. Izuku don't try to analyze this. I meant what I said. You obviously like this Melissa girl. And if you feel this way about it you should go for it. Knowing you she's probably head over heels for you too. And if she's not well you'll still have us. I told you Izuku your happiness is our happiness. And if that means adding one more girl to the mix that's fine with me. Mina assured Izuku. Is it really okay? I mean what about the others? Izuku asked as Mina shrugged. They'll deal. We all knew this might happen you're just too damn irresistible. Besides you're several hundred miles away what are they going to do? Mina asked as Izuku chuckled at Mina's brazen statement. Thanks Mina I'm going to have to pay you back double when I get back. Izuku's voice dropped to a husky level which sent a shiver through Mina's core. I don't know if that's a threat or a reward. Either way I'm looking forward to it. Bye Midori. Mina said as she hung up her legs rubbing together before she huffed. Why do you have to get me all hot and bothered like that? She said sliding her panties off. Izuku got off the phone with a smile as he turned around to see Melissa standing there blushing. And Melissa Izuku said shocked as Melissa sat down two plates of pasta. Was that a friend from back home? Melissa asked as Izuku sat down warily not sure what she'd heard. Um yes it was. She's a classmate and close friend of mine. I told her I'd call when I got here and forgot, so she called to chew me out. Izuku said rubbing the back of his head as Melissa gave an awkward laugh. You have to be careful Izuku. Girls worry about things like that. I worried about my dad being friends with All Might the number one hero in the world. I thought he might be the target of villains, but the thought never seemed to cross his mind. While it was the only thing I could think about, so I can understand your friend's concern. Izuku did feel bad about making Mina worry. And now that Melissa had elaborated on just what Mina might have been going through he swore to make up for it. And the first part was to take Mina's advice. Um Melissa thanks for today. I'm a bit obsessive about my training. So you taking me out and getting my mind off it really helped. Like I was telling Mina I'm so grateful you decided to take over my internship. Izuku placed a hand on Melissa's. To me Melissa you're the real hero. You do so much without a quirk more than I could ever dream of doing with one. And that's one of the reasons I've come to like you so much. But there are some things about me I need to tell you. Melissa placed her lips on Izuku's it was chaste and only lasted for a moment. Stop right there Izuku. Melissa said looking into his green eyes. I feel the same way, but we can't act on it, not yet. I want us to keep our eyes on the internship making you better and stronger. Once we've done that, I will listen to everything. But for right now let's just leave it at this. She said leaning back with a smile as she picked up her plate. Izuku stared at Melissa for a moment before nodding with a smile and picking up his pasta. The two ate in silence, though it wasn't uncomfortable. Izuku stood up with his plate putting it in the sink followed by Melissa who then followed him to the door. See you tomorrow Melissa. Izuku setting Melissa on the cheek before heading to the elevator. Melissa stood at her door watching Izuku until the elevator closed after which she closed her door and slid down at her mind whirling with all kinds of unfamiliar emotion. 
Knowing she wouldn't be able to get any work done Melissa decided to turn in early. But even hours after lying in the bed she couldn't fall asleep. Thoughts of Izuku plagued her. That smile those brilliant green eyes. But most of all what had he been about to tell her and why did she stop him? I know why I stopped him I didn't want things to change between us. I'm a coward. She said as she sat up in her nightshirt placing her head on her knees before sliding out of bed. Well if I'm not going to sleep might as well get some work done. I'll go down to the lab and work on Izuku's suit. She said slipping on some sweatpants and sandals as she made her way down to the lab. To her surprise she found that someone was already there and it was none other than Izuku or so the shoes and shirt outside the bullet chamber told her. Melissa walked up to the door of the chamber and noticed that the muzzle velocity was slightly raised and from the numbers Izuku's dodge rate had increased as well. She watched Izuku for a moment dodging around the room he was so focused she doubted he'd notice her even if she opened the door and shouted at him. I've got to improve faster so I can tell Melissa the truth. I don't want to make her wait any longer than she has to Izuku said through gritted teeth as he bounced around the room. Melissa covered her mouth turning away from the door as tears threatened to spill out. She walked away hurriedly grabbing Izuku's suit as she rode the elevator up to her room. Melissa scrubbed the tears from her eyes a determined glint in them now. Fine then Izuku, if you're going to push yourself for my sake I'll do the same. I don't care what you have to say I won't give up on you because dot you're the man I love. A man stood upon a water tower overlooking the sprawling city of Hasu. This was his hunting grounds for the time being. The man in question dressed in a velowing red scarf and a cloth mask across his face was known as the hero killer Sting. His body was covered in a multitude of blades from several knives to the sword on his back. His crimson eyes scoured the city looking for the next hero he would perch. Hero that's what they called themselves, but they didn't deserve it. Only one man was worthy of that title everyone else was nothing. Stain drew his sword slicing through the air, but it didn't make contact. He cast his eye to the left seeing a man-shaped vortex standing there. Calm yourself hero killer. My name is Kirajiri and I would like to offer you an invitation on behalf of the League of Villains. Stain withdrew his sword as he looked at Kirajiri. Very well then, lead on. Stain said as Kirajiri enveloped him in his mist depositing Stain in the middle of a bar. There was only one other person there, a young man with a hand on his face serving as a mask. Looking around the bar he noticed a destroyed poster of All Might. Welcome hero killer, I am Tamura Shigaraki leader of the League of Villains. Tamura stated as recognition dawned in Stain's eyes. So you're the ones who attacked Yue and were defeated. Stain stated to Tamura's irritation. Seeing the rising tension Kirajiri stepped in before Tamura said something that could ruin things. Yes we suffered a setback then and many of our soldiers were taken into custody. But with you on our side we no more will gather. Kirajiri explained as Stain cast an eye to him. I see now. You want me to help put the pieces of your shattered league back together. Stain said before looking at Tamura. As the leader of this league tell me. What is your purpose? What drives you? Stain asked as Shigaraki shrugged. I just want to destroy anything that pisses me off. All might. And little shits like this especially. Shigaraki said holding up a picture of a green haired boy in a new age gym uniform. Izuku Midori. Stain looked at the picture recognizing the person there. They'd only met once and it was very brief, but the green-haired boy who'd stood up to stop him from purging those vile criminals had stayed in his thoughts. What do you know of that boy? Stain asked stepping forward as Shigaraki scoffed. I know he's the reason our plan failed at USJ. So he has to die Stain placed his hands on his knives as he glared at Shigaraki. I was a fool to think you had a worthy cause. You're one of the people I hate the most in this world. You kill because something irritates you. That's the logic of a child the only reason to take a life is in pursuit of a worthy cause Stain shouted as Kirajiri looked on. This was their master's will after all Shigaraki was a barely sprouted plant with no interest in long-term plans only wanton destruction. But the hero killer he had purpose and hopefully having him around would push Shigaraki in the right direction. But it looked like things would not go as planned. Master should I step in? Kirajiri asked to the screen in the back of the bar from the speakers a voice spoke. Let it happen. This might be the only way he will come to learn and grow. He needs to think about his actions going forward and how they affect his future. The voice said simply as Kirijiri turned from the screen feeling a slice across his arm as the hero killer dragged his knife through his flesh and licked the blade supporting himself on the bar top one-handed. Immediately Kirijiri felt his body lock up. He couldn't move or even activate his warp gate. Stain turned stepping onto Tamura's right arm and stabbing into his left shoulder as the two fell to the floor of the bar with Stain's knife in his shoulder and the other dangerously close to his neck. No matter what you want to accomplish conviction and desire is necessary. Those without it will forever remain weak. Stain said staring down at Shigaraki. Oa oh, aren't you being a little rough? Kirajiri get rid of this guy. Kirajiri tried in vain to follow Tamura's request, but still found himself immobile. Two can't move, it must be the hero killer's quirk. Now that I've seen what you have to offer, I'm not impressed so I will dispose of you here and now. Stain stated as he pulled his knife forward only for Tamura's hand to grasp the blade. 
If you touch this palm I'll kill you Shigaraki said as Stain's knife began to crack and crumble turning to dust before Shigaraki swiped his palm at Stain causing the villain to jump back. I may not have anything like conviction or whatever, but I do have desire the biggest of which is killing All Might. I hate the way people flock to garbage like him, like he's some messiah. I want to destroy their pillar of strength and watch as they're crushed underneath the rubble of their own hopelessness, Shigaraki said as he gripped his injured shoulder. The last of my wounds had finally healed and then you went and did this. You should be more considerate it's not like we have a cleric in our party. So that's the extent of your character. It seems we're on opposite sides of the board, but our goals are similar. We agree that the present needs to be destroyed, Stain said sheathing his remaining knife. Stop messing around. Fuck off, drop dead. I'm the kind of person you hate the most right. Shigaraki said looking at the hero killer. I was testing your mettle. I've learned that people are at their most honest when they're about to die. It's aberrant but you do have a desire. And a twisted sense of conviction inside you. It might not be too late for you. So perhaps I'll let you grow and if you turn out wrong I'll weed you out like all the others. You think you can get rid of me as simply as yanking weeds out of a garden. Shigaraki hissed. At this moment Kirijiri felt his body come back under his control as he stood up straight clutching at the cut on his arm. Hirajiri I don't want some mad paladin in my party. Hirajiri looked at Tamura and tried once more to get things back on track. Tamura he will be a great ally if he joins us. Stain cut the discussion short. Return me to Hasu I have several more heroes to deal with. Looking between the two once more Kirajiri opened a portal as requested. It seemed like the two had come to some kind of arrangement, but only time would tell. You're working really hard kid I like that. Izuku opened his eyes and looked around seeing that he was in the familiar dreamscape where he met the previous users of One for All. He saw a man sitting there as orange light bathed the area. He couldn't make out what the man looked like, but he was pretty sure it was the same aspect he met during his match with Shinso. It's you again. How come I still can't see you? Izuku asked as the silhouette faced him. You're still not ready, but you're a hell of a lot closer now. You're a hard worker really, and it's showing. You're almost there. I thought I'd have to wait until another crisis came about to meet you. But if you keep going at this pace we'll be meeting very soon. Izuku looked at the figure before him and decided to see what information he could get about something that had been on his mind for a while. So, are you All Might's teacher? Izuku asked before the figure shook his head. No that wasn't me as teacher was a woman and she's in here too. She's excited to meet you even more than the rest of us. He explained as Izuku dipped his head in disappointment. He was hoping to learn more about his mentor, but there was something else he needed to learn about. All Might says I will have to fight all for one in the future can you tell me anything about him? The figure went rigid at the name before sighing and rubbing the back of his head. He's a bastard who lies and uses people. He turned my best friend against me and our friends. It was almost too late before he realized how evil all for one was and helped me fight him. He ended up sacrificing himself so I could live and pass on one for all. He's powerful and a genius. You won't ever see him until he's sure he can beat you. Izuku was feeling a weight settle in his chest as the scope of his enemy was revealed to him. The figure could apparently see this and shook his head. Don't worry kid unlike the rest of us you won't be alone. All of us are with you and we'll do everything to make sure you're ready. Remember all of our power and experience is at your hands. Believe it Izuku smiled as the area he was in began to fade away and he was brought into the waking world. Melissa looked down into Izuku's green eyes as the boy woke up. Izuku did you spend all night training? Melissa asked with a frown on her face. Izuku sat up slowly realizing that his head had been lying on Melissa's lap. No two stopped around midnight I think. Is it morning already? He asked noticing the bags under Melissa's eyes. Um Melissa what time did you got to sleep? Izuku asked as Melissa blushed before sighing. Same I think I was working on your sui I mean I was working on a couple school projects late last night. She said not wanting Izuku to know she was working on his suit until she was done with it. Anyway I guess congratulations are in order. Because of your late night training session you've tripled your evasion score. You're a little over 60% now. I didn't think you'd reach this marker so soon, but I should have known better. Come on let's get you a shower and something to eat and I'll explain the next stage of your training. Melissa said as she helped Izuku to his feet the young hero stretching as he did so. He looked at the sea of rubber bullets on the floor before Melissa giggled. Don't worry about it. She said once they were outside and pressed a button that caused several ports on the floor to open sucking up the rubber bullets and reloading the turrets in the process. All Izuku could do was shake his head. The wonders of Island will never cease to amaze me. He said as he went up to Melissa's room once more as the girl pushed him into the bathroom telling him she'd go get his clothes. Once Izuku was bathed and dressed he joined Melissa at the dining table and saw a massive plate of eggs bacon and pancakes. Oh Melissa I don't think I can eat all this, Izuku said as Melissa smiled. Oh yes you can, I've been monitoring your body and after that all nighter you pulled you'll have no problem putting down that plate. Now eat up while I explain what comes next. Izuku looked at the plate, he was hungry. 
but he didn't think he was that hungry. Still, he didn't want to waste Melissa's efforts so he poured syrup on his pancakes and began eating as Melissa put her tablet on the table tapping the glass as a hologram came up between the two of them. You express two points of concern, one managing your speed, and two increasing your strength. With your raise in evasion I think the first step is well to being completed, which means we can now multitask into the strength portion of your agenda. Melissa clarified as she brought up Izuku's statistics to clarify. Izuku looked at the series of numbers understanding some, but the rest was Greek to him. The rest of your training will be performed in our gravity chamber, Melissa said bringing up the specs on her father's inventions. This machine is able to increase the gravity in the room up to 100 times now seeing as you are way stronger than average I say starting you at 40g would be good. At that amount of gravity it would be like carrying a little over three tons. For his part Izuku sat there his plate of food forgotten as he stared in awe at Melissa. That's amazing Melissa I can't believe something like that really exists. Island really is humanity's future. Izuku said gushing at the sheer awesomeness of the place he was in. Melissa smiled at Izuku's excitement she remembered wearing that same expression every time her dad showed off a new invention. Yeah, my dad built it to help astronauts train for the possibility of colonizing other planets with vast differences in gravity. Melissa said as Izuku hurriedly cleared his plate. He really wanted to see this gravity chamber. Guess you were right Melissa I was hungrier than I thought, so can we go? Izuku asked vibrating with excitement at this new step in his training. Melissa sighed. Guess there's no point in trying to slow you down, otherwise you'll just go down there anyway. She said as she stretched and headed out with her tablet to show Izuku the gravity chamber. The two made their way down to the lab and over to a door with a console next to it. Alright go on and it's better if you're already inside when I turn it on. Melissa instructed. Oh and you might want to take off any unnecessary clothing for now wouldn't want your clothes leaving bruises or tearing off you as you move. Melissa instructed as Izuku took his shirt off showing off those impeccable abs of his. Melissa felt as if the room jumped 10 degrees in temperature. Once he kicked off his shoes he looked at Melissa staring at him and felt his own face heat up some. Seeing that Izuku had noticed her staring she adjusted her glasses to break the moment. Anyway once inside just do your normal workout routine. And don't worry I'll be right outside monitoring your vitals and everything. She said as Izuku nodded and opened the door stepping inside the large room and looking around. The entire room seemed to be made out of some material not unlike plastic but sturdier. Izuku heard a low hum start up right before it felt as if a boulder was dropped on his entire body. He dropped to his hands and knees before activating his full cowl. Taking a deep breath Izuku slowly gained his feet. The weight was still there, but manageable. Alright let's train. Tenya Ida was walking next to the normal hero manual his internship mentor. Yeah I was kind of surprised that you chose to come to my agency. Not that I'm not happy to have you, but not much really happens here in Hasu. Tenya really wasn't listening to what Manuel had to say he was here for one reason and one reason only. To avenge his brother and genium by finding and killing Stain. Midoriya had been right about what Ida had wanted. And even though he was going against his friend's wishes he couldn't just stand by and leave his brother unavenged. He had Emmanuel shouted bringing Tenya back from his violent thoughts. As sorry Manuel what were you saying? Ada asked as Manuel looked the kid over. Look I know what happened to your brother and I'm sorry but don't let that distract you from what needs to be done. Manuel said as he waved his hands to the people walking the streets. These people need protection and it's our job as heroes to do so. We can't use our positions for personal gain that's not what heroes do. Manuel said patting Ida's shoulder. Remember that. Manuel said as he started walking again with Ida behind him. Several days later on a rooftop stain stood looking out at Hasu City. This is what you brought us here for to kill more heroes. This was the important business you were talking about. Shigaraki asked looking at stain. Now you will see what conviction means. There are so many undeserving of the title of hero and no one seems to care or take notice. So I will make them notice. These false idols are a cancer. And I am the scalpel to cut it out. Stain said leaping from the rooftop into the darkened streets of Hasu. He has a point to mirror wherever the hero killer has struck crime rates drop soon after, as if the heroes are working harder to prove themselves. Kurajiri explained as Tamura scratched at his neck. Well that's just great the heroes are working hard. How does the hero killer breeding more heroes help us Kurajiri? Never mind I don't care after tonight the hero killer will be a distant memory. Shigaraki then pulled out a phone dialing the only number within. Master can have a few Namu. Shigaraki asked before hearing his master's voice in his ear. Why? All for one asked a grin on his face. Because it's my right to destroy whatever I don't like. Isn't that right master? Shigaraki responded before hearing all for one's reply. Very well Tamira, but I'll only give you three use them wisely. As he said this three portals opened behind Shigaraki producing three different Namu. One was a hulking brute similar to the first Namu, but the upper part of its head was nothing but brain with no eyes. The next was a spindly one with long arms walking on all fours eyes seated directly in its brain. 
The last was also skinny, but walked on two legs its brain and eyes exposed much like its brethren. Now go Namu destroy Hasu city Shigaraki commanded as the three beasts rushed out into the city to lay waste. Let's see if your honor will survive this hero killer Shigaraki stated laughing into the night. Tenya who was accompanying Manuel once again this night rushed after the pro hero as they ran towards the site and sounds of explosion. Tenya looked at the plume of smoke rising above the skyline wondering what could be the cause. But that flew from his mind as he caught a glimpse of red in an alleyway. He stopped immediately and turned ducking into the alley running full tilt down until he came face to face with the object of his hatred. Stain stood with his knife in the shoulder of the pro hero native. He turned looking at Ida. And who are you? Stain asked pointing his sword at Ida who slowly reached up taking his helmet off to look the hero killer in the eye. I am the younger brother of a hero you injured. His name is Ingenium and because of you he may never walk again Ida shouted his eyes full of anger. This is no place for children boy. I'll give you one chance to walk away. Stain said dropping Native to the ground. Run kid, get help Native shouted as Ida stared at Stain. I've been thinking about this moment every waking moment. Thinking of what I'd say to you when I found you, what I'd do. Ida said as Stain stared him down. And what have you decided on? If you give me the wrong answer I won't hesitate to purge you along with this filth here. Stain said as Ida pulled his eyes away from Stain to look at Native and smiled. I thought when I found you I'd do everything in my power to kill you and avenge my brother. But now that I'm here all I can think about is what a good friend said to me recently. I didn't want to hear it then. But in this moment it's all I can think about and I think I'm going to follow what he said. Stain looked upon Ida in confusion. A moment ago he'd seen nothing but anger and vengeance in this boy's eyes. But now all he could see was cold determination. He said to me, A hero protects people. It's not about punishing the guilty, but saving the innocent. And it's because of those words that I can't run. I will save you sir because that's what a hero does Ida shouted putting on his helmet before taking a running stance. Stain looked at Ida and smiled a wide grin. I see. Well then try your luck hero Stain said pointing his sword at Ida. Ida looked through the eyes of his helmet at Stain as he dug through everything he knew of the villain. He'd done as much research as possible leading up to his internship. And all he could find was that the hero killer was skilled with blades of all kinds and that he always had at least three victims in any given city he was. His victims always displayed slash and stab wounds. But what stuck with Ida the most was what Midoriya told him. Ida I've fought Stain and he uses techniques like mine. Knowing this would give him a leg up, but not by much. He needed to make every second count. I don't have to beat him, I just need to get Native out of here. Ada thought to himself as he took a running stance. Well come on boy come save this filth. If you can Stain shouted as Ada rocketed forward going for an engine powered roundhouse. Stain smirked leaping above Ida. You know I let your brother live in hopes that he would serve as a warning to this world of fake heroes. But still nothing has changed. Maybe your death will leave more of an impact Stain growled as he kicked forward the spikes on the toe of his boot tearing at Ida's costume as the young hero dodged to the side running along the wall towards Nate. Almost there Ida shouted mentally as he reached for the pro only to have to break off as Stain appeared before him nearly impaling him on his blade. You didn't think it would be that easy did you? Stain asked as Ida and he locked eyes. Ida grit his teeth as he looked between Stain and Native. Stain was fast not as fast as Ada, but close he couldn't rely on just his speed like he'd planned. I should have known that my speed wasn't enough to overcome Midoriya so why would it work against someone even more skilled? I need a plan. Ada thought to himself as he rushed forward jumping off the wall sailing over Stain as if heading for Native again. But right as he Ada reached his zenith Ada activated his engines directing him straight down at Stain his foot coming down on the villain who blocked with the side of his sword feeling Ada's weight crash down onto him before noticing the grin on Ada's face. Now Recipro burst Ada shouted activating his last ditch move propelling himself at Native using Stain's sword as a leaping off point the force of his acceleration snapping the villain's sword as he flew towards Native grabbing hold of the hero. Ada's feet hit the ground and they took off towards the mouth of the alley. I'm going to make it it a thought before feeling searing pain in one of his legs causing him to stumble and fall dropping native as he did so. The pro hit the ground and rolled like a ragdoll. That was a nice try kid. I didn't expect something so crafty from a kid like you. Stain said as he came towards the two. Ada looked down at his leg seeing the knife embedded in his flesh. I commend your effort. It was truly heroic and for that, I will let you live. Stain said pulling a knife from one of his many holsters. But that piece of garbage is too far gone and must be cleansed. Stain said with cold malice before hurling the knife. Ada saw the flash of light as the blade caught the light of the moon. He watched the blade move in slow motion and without even noticing it his body seemingly moved on its own flinging him over native as he felt the knife bite deep into his back. It a bit back his scream clenching his jaw as a groan rattled through his teeth. Kid stop get out of here I'm not worth this native shouted looking at the child protecting him from this madman at the risk of his own body. Stain stood a few feet away completely shocked at what he just saw. This kid had thrown himself in the path of his blade without a second thought. 
You are worthy brother of Ingenium far worthier than your brother. I don't want to kill you. Move and let me conclude my business here. You don't have to die. Stain said as he looked up at the sound of an explosion. That idiot. It seems you won't be the only person I kill tonight. Stain said standing over Native who was still being protected by Ida. Move Stain shouted as Ida shook his head. I will not. I won't let you kill him Ida shouted thoughts of Midoriya in his head and the lengths to which he'd go in this situation. Very well child, have it your way. Stain said raising his broken sword the ragged edge of the blade catching the light of the moon before Stain brought it down only for the sword to be knocked off course by a shuriken which lodged itself in the wall across from the hero killer. I think that's enough Saki, said a man standing at the end of the alley dressed in a red komodo with a hood covering his face and a straight cane with a jade pommel he held in front of him. Stain turned from his two captives his eyes glaring at the newcomer before recognition dawned in his eyes. Yoshi I see you've returned to Japan. Stain said walking forward to stand in front of the new man. Didn't you give up playing hero after failing to kill me? Stain questioned as Yoshi raised his head his amber eyes glowing in the dark of his hood. I didn't fail Yoshi. I gave you a chance to change and be better because I still believe that you could change. But seeing you here and now, I know that is no longer possible. And all the death you caused is my fault so I will take responsibility for it. Yoshi spoke calmly to his adversary. Ada stared on at the two before hearing the newcomer speak. Boy take that man and leave here. Don't look back or stop no matter what, Yoshi said before looking at Ida and giving a gentle smile. Izuku would be very unhappy to see you injured, Yoshi said before without even looking he locked his cane with Stain's blade. Yoshi opened his eyes as he looked at Stain. Leave now Yoshi shouted swiping Stain's sword away before delivering a punch to Stain's diaphragm. The villain gave an audible gasp as Ida slowly rose to his feet. The knives in his leg and back hindered his movement, but he wouldn't let that stop him. He placed his hand on the wall as he leaned native against him slowly hobbling his way out of the alley to the sound of battle behind him. I have to keep moving. I need to get out of here and find help. Ada panted his breaths getting heavier and harder to take, but he wouldn't stop. His leg felt as if it was on fire as he felt his warm bleed through his suit his pant leg sticking to him like a second skin. The view of the alleyway was getting blurry, but Ada didn't stop. A hero protects the innocent. A hero protects the innocent. This was the mantra Ida recited to himself to give him motivation to keep moving. Something whizzed past Ida's ear, but still Ida moved. A hero protects the innocent. The entrance to the alley was only a few feet away now Ida could see the lights of the street and hear the voices of heroes as they were. A hero protects the innocent. Ida went to raise his foot, but the limb was numb and drug across the ground causing him and Native to fall to the ground outside the entrance. Hey who's that? Someone shouted as Ida attempted to drag himself further. There's a man fighting he needs help. Hey kid, take it easy you're safe now. Someone get an ambulance here the same hero shouted. Ada Ada recognized this voice as his vision slowly began to grow dark. Manual I'm sorry. Ada passed out there on the concrete surrounded by heroes as they waited for first responders while others proceeded into the alley to investigate Ada's claim about fighting. TCH he got away. Now what Yoshi will you exact another half measure on me again? Don't you understand? What I'm doing is the only way that the world will realize what a true hero is Stain shouted dropping his broken sword to retrieve a pair of knives to slash at Yoshi who skillfully dodged parrying with his cane before going for sweep that Stain jumped into the air avoiding as he threw several knives down at Yoshi who countered with his shurite. You're wrong Saki, they may not be perfect, but these heroes are doing their best to help, and among them are those who are truly heroic. You saw it just now and I know you've seen it in my student, Yoshi said looking at Stain who grinned. I can't deny that. Your boy possesses the heart of a true hero as does Ingenium's little brother. But for every one like them there are dozens of fakers. The balances is too far skewed. So I'll continue my righteous work until there are no fakes left. Will you do what it takes to stop me Yoshi? Stain said raising his knives as Yoshi mirrored his movement raising his cane. I won't let you continue this Yoshi no matter what it takes. The two stared each other down before leaping towards one another the sound of clashing metal ringing through the alley. Izuku stepped out of the gravity chamber clutching the side of the doorway as he stepped through it and looked at the readout on the monitor next to the door 100 GS. He smiled as he looked at Melissa who handed him a bottle of water. You did it 100 GS I can't believe it. I know you had a bit of a head start, but in four days you maxed out the machine this is unprecedented. Melissa said looking at her tablet before looking at Izuku and smiled. You really are incredible you know that. Melissa said blushing looking at Izuku's bare sweaty chest. You're the amazing one Melissa. I wouldn't have been able to do this without you. Our promise drove me to this. He said holding his hand to her cheek as the older girl blushed. Oh that reminds me I've finished your suit. Well mostly finished I'll probably be up the rest of the night putting on the finishing touches. Melissa said turning to the case sitting on the lab table. Before feeling Izuku grab her hand. Melissa's time. He said simply but firm in his statement as Melissa sighed nodding her head. 
A promise is a promise I suppose, she said making her way over to the desk and sitting down in the chair as Izuku grabbed a seat across from her. Okay go ahead tell me what you wanted to say back then, Melissa told him. She couldn't believe how long it had actually been. Izuku had been here for a week tomorrow. He'd be leaving that afternoon. On one hand it felt like they'd been together for months, but at the same time like no time had passed since she met him in her father's lab days ago, and now he'd be leaving her. It was all too much, but Melissa had to concentrate whatever Izuku had to say she wouldn't, couldn't let it affect her feelings for him. I have, girlfriends six of them to be exact, Izuku said as bluntly as possible. He'd been thinking about how to say that almost constantly while he was training and he settled on being as direct and honest as possible. He'd closed his eyes as tightly as possible when he said not knowing what to expect. But after several moments of silence he cracked one eye open to look at Melissa who seemed to be sitting in a state of shock. Her eyes glazed as her mouth repeatedly closed and opened like a fish out of water. You am Melissa. Izuku asked reaching out to touch her. But the sound of his voice seemed to reboot the girl as she sat up straight flinching away from his hand. Ask six of them you say. You have six girlfriends Izuku. Melissa asked as Izuku nodded shamefully. So that girl you were talking to a few days ago she was one of them. Melissa asked as Izuku nodded looking at Melissa as she worked everything out in her head. And you want me to be your girlfriend too? Melissa asked as she looked at Izuku without a moment's hesitation shook his head. I know how it sounds, but I swear it's not like I'm some philanderer. I sincerely love each and every one of them. And I know it's only been a few days that I've spent with you Melissa, but to me it feels as if I've known you for so much longer. You're so passionate about science and you make me want to live up to all the expectations you have for me. I really like you Melissa and I want to be with you if you'll have me. Izuku said blushing madly, but he didn't take his eyes from hers. Melissa looked at Izuku and the raw honesty he exuded was terrifying to look him in the eyes when he got like this, terrifying and exhilarating at the same time. Izuku do you know how crazy this sounds? One man six women, no seven women counting me. That is well to be honest it's not as weird as it sounds looking at it from a scientific viewpoint. Harems are not as uncommon as people think. But still Melissa said sitting down and looking at Izuku. I want to believe you Izuku. I do but Melissa petered off she had no argument besides her feelings. And that just didn't feel like enough. I didn't inherit my quirk it was given to me. Melissa looked up from the floor as she looked at Izuku adjusting her glasses. Come again. She asked as Izuku took a deep breath. The quirk I have now, I wasn't born with it. I was given this quirk by Izuku bit his lip as he tried to force the truth out into the open air. I'm sorry all might Izuku lamented. But he knew that it would take a leap of faith for Melissa to trust him, and he cared for her enough to risk everything. My quirk was given to me by Al. Stop Melissa shouted covering Izuku's mouth with her palms as her clear blue eyes full of tears stared into Izuku's green ones. Just stop. To believe you love me and all the girls you have with you, so stop. Melissa said taking her hands from Izuku's mouth. You were about to tell me something really painful weren't you? Her words were a statement of fact not a question. I could see it on your face. Whatever you were about to tell me was truly painful to the point you were forcing yourself to say anything. She said as she grabbed Izuku's hand seeing the small streams of coming from his hand where he clenched it into a fist. If you were willing to do something so utterly painful for you just for me, how could I not believe you? She said picking his fist up. It was so hard and rough against her soft palms. Melissa at each of Izuku's knuckles before covering his hand with hers. I'm yours Izuku. She said moving forward to him on the lips. Izuku received her joyfully pulling her close to him as the two had trying their best to pour out all their delayed passion as Melissa seemingly melted into Izuku's warm hard body taking special notice of the bulge in his pants resting against her crotch as she sat in his lap. My oh my Izuku is all that for me. She asked letting her hand drift down his chest to his torso and finally to rest on the beast in his pants. Well you're the only one around, so I gee guess so. Izuku stuttered trying to be clever as Melissa giggled standing up as she grabbed hold of Izuku's hand pulling him after her as they rode the elevator to the home she shared with her father. She couldn't believe that this would be one of her final times with Izuku, but she couldn't focus on that right now as the doors opened revealing her home. Melissa stepped into her home looking over her shoulder at Izuku as she led him to her room. She opened the door and looked at the mess of papers and notes as well as sketches and such. She really should have cleaned up before this, but before she could lament her disorderly bedroom she was lifted into the air in Izuku's strong arms before the two fell onto her bed. Izuku wasted no time in attacking her neck his lips dancing her along her throat as he began unbuttoning the blue button-down shirt she'd worn that day chasing each button with it to the newly revealed skin until coming to her bra. She blushed as Izuku looked at the plain brassiere she'd chosen to wear that day. Yet another choice she'd regret as Izuku's fingers nimbly undid the rest of her shirt spreading it open as he then moved to her bra undoing the clip in the front allowing her bust to sway free of its confine. 
Izuku stared at her for a moment before cupping a tit in each hand gently massaging her orbs his fingers dancing across her nipples drawing forth breathy moans from Melissa as she writhed on the bed her thighs rubbing against one another. Izuku she moaned out as Izuku smiled down at her releasing her ass for the time being as his hands moved to her pants undoing the button before sliding them down her legs revealing her creamy limbs and plaid panties. Izuku chuckled at the sight causing Melissa to blush. Don't laugh she said batting him with her calves before Izuku captured one of her legs peppering it with ease starting from her ankle and working his way up to the juncture between her legs. Melissa could feel his breath puffing against her needy cunt. She felt his hand at her waistband before sliding her panties right off her taking notice of the string of arousal linking the article of clothing to her before it snapped free. Izuku reached for his shorts he'd been wearing for his training and slid them down revealing his thick, throbbing standing straight as an arrow in direct defiance of gravity and pointed straight at Melissa Cunt. Condoms, Izuku said to Melissa who was lost in appraising Izuku's member. W what? She asked as Izuku leaned forward laying his flush against her slit causing Melissa to shiver in anticipation. E you have condoms? Izuku whispered against her ear as Melissa shook her head no. And no I have an implant. She said feeling Izuku's member lying against her like this was scrambling her brain barely allowing her to string words together. Izuku panted against her for a moment processing what she'd said before grabbing hold of his member and lining it up with Melissa's and slowly began sliding into her folds. Melissa curled her toes at the new sensation she was feeling. It was amazing until she felt Izuku tear her hymen it stung a little, but she'd felt worse experimenting and having said experiments blow up in her face. Izuku groaned feeling the tight confines of Melissa's grip his massaging every inch begging for him to explode inside her, but he resisted the urge to jackhammer her cunt for the moment. He didn't want Melissa to be in any more pain than was necessary. Looking at Izuku Melissa smiled seeing the boy holding himself back for her benefit. It's okay I'm ready to take it all. She whispered to him before pressing her lips flush with his even going so far as to deepen it by pushing her tongue into his mouth tasting ever why inch of Izuku's mouth as he did the same to her. She could tell he had practiced as he thoroughly dominated her tongue with his own before the two pulled away. Izuku threaded his fingers through Melissa hair feeling the silky strands flow through his fingers as he thrust in and out of Melissa's moist hearing the sounds of their lovemaking drove Izuku to do more. He sat up looking down at Melissa with a smile as bright as the sun. She never wanted to be without that smile of his. Izuku pulled Melissa to his chest having her sit in his lap as he thrust up into her making her yelp as he struck her at a new angle. Melissa wrapped her legs around Izuku's waist squeezing him tightly trying to force even more of him into her cunt as she panted in his ear her hair moist with sweat lying against her back and across her forward as Izuku gripped her ass pounding her hard and fast. And Melissa gg gonna come Izuku hissed into her shoulder before ing it as Melissa grinned happily. Do it inside it's. Okay she gasped out before sinking her teeth into Izuku's shoulder as the boy sped up only for Melissa to then feel a flood of warmth surge into her core. Her nails dug into his back as she screamed in pleasure loud enough to wake the dead before the two fell back to the bed on their sides facing each other. Melissa's legs lay entangled with Izuku as the two looked at one another and smiled. Izuku brushed the hair out of Melissa's eyes only for the girl to just realize that her glasses were gone. She began looking around before finding them on the floor and replacing them so she could look Izuku properly in the eye. Hi, she said and then burst into giggles at how absurdly small that word seemed in the aftermath of what they'd done. Izuku joined her in a quiet giggle before responding. Hi, he said as the two devolved into another giggle fest. Slowly the two began to drift off Izuku wrapping his arms around Melissa and falling asleep. But the older girl had only feigned sleep waiting until Izuku had drifted off before stealthily pulling herself from his embrace and throwing her blanket over him. She got to her feet nearly falling on her face as the feeling slowly came back into her legs and the sensation of Izuku's gift dripping down her leg. She blushed at the thought before getting dressed again and clumsily making her way to the lab. She had a suit to finish. Izuku stood in the airport of I Island holding hands with Melissa. His flight would be leaving soon, but he just couldn't bring himself to stop staring into those beautiful blue eyes of hers. Melissa I Melissa at Izuku stopping whatever he was about to say and pushed the case containing his new suit into his chest. Don't say anything it'll be too hard. Besides you're wearing my property you're going to have to come back to get it repaired. She said holding his hand and stroking the red bracelet on his wrist. Go make the world a better place. She said pushing him towards the airport gate. And tell Uncle Might I said hi Melissa said as Izuku waved at her until the moment he entered the hall to the airplane. Of course I will. I'll be thinking about you Melissa. Izuku said as he left from view. Melissa stood there her hands slowly waving before coming to a stop and taking a deep breath before she turned and walked away. I'll see him again, I know I will. Melissa thought to herself as she wiped away a few lingering tears as she headed back to her home which would feel so much emptier now. As the plane took off Izuku jolted in his seat. I didn't get Melissa's number he said in a harsh whisper falling back into his seat as he looked at his phone only to see he had an alert. 
Thinking it was a missed call or text from one of the girls he opened it to see Melissa's name and number added to his contact. Izuku smiled as he shook his head. She thinks of everything. He said simply with a big smile on his face. Izuku entered the airport his duffel bag on one shoulder and his hero suitcase in his left hand. He looked around wondering if his mother had come to meet him, but was instead met with All Might in his true form. Welcome back young Midwaria. I trust your time with Melissa was fruitful. All Might asked chalking up Izuku's subsequent blush to his usual meekness being around a woman for so long. If you're going to be the number one hero kid you're going to have to get over that SAP All Might thought to himself as Izuku spoke. A uh, yes All Might quite the eye opener. Izuku said as he followed All Might to their cap. Izuku thought back to his training and clenched his fist around the handle to his case in excitement he was eager to show off his growth to his mentor. Glad to hear that young man. All Might said before biting the bullet. We won't be stopping at your home just yet. We have to make a detour to the hospital there are some people who would like to speak with you. Izuku's eyes widened in shock at All Might's words. What do you mean All Might who's waiting at the hospital for me? Izuku said his voice rising with anxiety. All Might looked at his charge and placed a hand on his shoulder. Calm down Midoriya it's nothing life-threatening, but it is serious. I'm sorry I was asked not to say anything more. They want to tell you themselves. All Might stated as Izuku sat back taking a deep breath as the two rode in silence to Dagaba Hospital. Izuku exited the car about to grab his things but All Might shook his hand. Don't worry Midoriya I'll be waiting here for you when you're done. The number one hero said before handing Izuku the room numbers of the people he was about to see. Izuku walked up to the hospital desk asking for directions to the first room he was to visit before heading that way. He stood in front of the door before giving a knock and was put at ease by the voice he heard telling him to come in. Izuku opened the door and looked at Ida lying in a bed with a book in his hand and his bandaged leg propped up on pillows. Midori I didn't expect you so soon. You must have just gotten off the plane. I wish you hadn't rushed over here right after your trip you must be exhausted Tenya stated worried for his friend's physical well-being. Ida what happened to you? Izuku said taking a seat in the chair next to Ida's bed. The taller boy sighed before looking at Izuku. Straight to the point then. Very well Midoriya as you probably guessed I didn't take your advice. I went on my internship fully intending to hunt down and avenge my older brother. You know the saying those who go looking for tend to find it and I did. Ada said swallowing his throat suddenly dry. I rehearsed what I would say to the hero killer when I met him. What I would do when I came face to face with him. But when I did the only thing that came to mind were your words. How a hero is supposed to protect people and my anger and thirst for vengeance seemed so minuscule in the face of your words. All I wanted was to save Native and I did. Ada said looking over to Izuku. I know I shouldn't have gone after Stain he could have easily killed me and would have if not for your master. Ada said causing Izuku to pop his head up as he looked at Ada. Master Splinter was there. Izuku asked clutching the necklaces he wore at all times. Yes he was and he saved my and Native's lives. Without him we'd be dead I'm sure of it. Ada said looking at Izuku. I wanted to see you before school started because I want to tell you how thankful I am for you. If not for your words that day I would have gotten myself killed without avenging my brother or saving Nate. I would have died a truly pointless death. So from the bottom of my heart I thank you Midoriya and I swear to live up to the ideal of what a hero really is going forward. Ada said bowing as well as he could. He didn't want to tear the stitches in his back. Izuku sighed placing a hand on Ada's shoulder. I'm just glad you're okay Ada, so how injured are you? Izuku asked as Ada sighed. All things considered I got off pretty easily. I took a knife to the back, but it didn't damage anything vital some of the doctors think that was on purpose. I was also stabbed in the leg that one I'm told will have some lasting nerve damage. It can be healed with surgery, but I'm going to wait until I've become the kind of hero my brother would be proud of. I caused a lot of trouble for Manuel because of my selfishness this is my punishment, and I accept it. Ada stated looking at his bandaged leg as Izuku put his hand on Ada's shoulder. Ada I think you should get the surgery now after what you told me there's no way your brother wouldn't be proud of you. Izuku said looking at Ida. Sure you started off wrong, but you realized that and decided to do the right thing in the end. That counts for a lot. Ida looked down at Izuku's praise and coughed wiping his eyes. Thank you for that Midoriya I'll think on it. Ida said to him a lot on his mind. Izuku stood up and looking at the other room number on the piece of paper All Might gave him now aware of whom the person in said room was. Well Ida I hope you get better and I look forward to seeing you at school. He said opening Ada's door. Also you'll be on trash duty for the next week class reps orders. It's your punishment. Izuku said looking over his shoulder with a grin as Ada mirrored it. It is what I deserve. I will not let you down Ada said getting some of his robotic movements back as Izuku left with a chuckle heading to Master Splinter's room and giving a knock once there. Enter, said his master's voice as Izuku opened the door and walked in seeing his master lying in a hospital bed staring out the window. Welcome back my pupil. Master Splinter spoke as Izuku took the seat next to his bed. 
It's good to see you master. I must thank you for saving my friend's life first and foremost. Izuku said about to bow in gratitude before Splinter stopped him looking at the green-haired young man. There's no reason to thank me Izuku. What I did was simply clean up my own mess. Saki was my responsibility to deal with and instead I procrastinated and let him run wild. Saving your friend was part of my repentance as was this. Splinter said raising the stump where his left hand had once been. Izuku stared at the bandaged stump for what seemed like hours as his mind refused to process what he was seeing. Master Splinter you hand is gone. Izuku said dumbfounded as he looked at Splinter who wore a gentle smile. Thank you for that astute observation Izuku. Yoshi teased his youngest pupil. Izuku's mind finally caught up with the present before he started spouting words. I'm sorry Master Splinter I didn't mean to say something so stupid. I mean I'm sure you can get a new one what with the advancements in prosthetics. Izuku said before remembering a certain young scientist he was quite familiar with. In fact I can make a call to someone who I'm sure would be more than happy to help. Here I'll call her right now. Izuku said fishing out his phone before Splinter snatched it from his hand and giving a flick to his forehead for good measure. That is unnecessary Izuku after all even with one hand I can still beat any of my students. Master Splinter said chuckling as Izuku composed himself. What happened to Stain, Master Splinter? Izuku asked as Yoshi thought back to that night. Splinter raised his cane blocking Stain's knives before driving his palm into the villain's stomach causing him to fly back as Stain launched his knives at Yoshi who dodged to the side running along the wall going for a roundhouse kick that Stain ducked under turning around to drive his knife into Splinter's back only to receive a face full of blinding powder. The hero killer gripped his face as he stared at the blurry image that was Splinter. It was this momentary distraction that led to Stain's downfall as he didn't react in time to stop the heroes from surrounding him. Sir please step back a female hero said as she stepped in front of Yoshi as she looked at the hero killer. Stain rubbed his eyes as he made out the shapes of various heroes. Well come on then if you think you fake heroes can stop me. Only one hero is worthy of taking my life Stain shouted stepping forward as the heroes rushed in. Stain jumped into the air kicking off from the wall as he spun past the group of heroes his knives flashing like lightning as he cut across each one. They were nothing more than glancing blows. But Yoshi knew what would happen as Stain licked his blades the heroes fell to the ground limb. Now it's over Stain shouted bringing down his blade on the nearest hero, but was stopped as his blade bit deep into the left wrist of Hamato Yoshi nearly severing it entirely. I won't let you Orokusaki shouted Splinter as he jabbed several points of Stain's body the villain felt all his strength leave his body as he fell onto his back. Yoshi I Stain yelled his voice echoing off the walls of the alley. They took Saki away after that, and I was brought here. There was nothing the doctors could do to save my hand, but I don't regret it. The way I see it losing a hand to pay for my mistake all those years ago is a small price to pay. They also were planning on arresting me until they found out I had no quirk, so they had to let me go. Though I did have to convince them not to arrest Raphael as he threatened to beat their heads in if they came near me. Splinter said with a chuckle placing his hand on Izuku's head. I'm sure your friend told you that your words motivated him to be a real hero. I feel the same way Izuku. Watching you grow over the years has led me here. I thought I would have to kill Saki in order to right my wrong, but you showed me there was another way, and for that I thank you. Yoshi said bowing his head to Izuku whose eyes overflowed with tears as he gripped his master's hand. You're welcome Master Splinter Izuku gasped. Izuku walked out of the hospital getting back into the taxi with all might. The number one hero said nothing simply patting Izuku on the back as the two rode to Izuku's house. The next day the students returned to UA each excited to tell the others of what happened during their internships. Izuku walked into class looking at Ida who felt his gaze and raised a hand in greeting. Midori how was Island? Mina asked slinging an arm over his shoulder as the boy started at her sudden appearance. Oh um it was nice I learned a lot. He said blushing as Mina smiled at him. Oh I bet you did you'll have to tell me all about it better yet you should show me. She said with a predatory grin as Izuku smiled as well looking past her locking eyes with Momo, Jiro, Suyu, Achako and he assumed Toru as well before making his way to his desk as Aizawa entered. Welcome back you had better learned a lot from your internships, because your first class will be a test of your recently acquired knowledge. Get into your suits and meet All Might at training ground Gamma. Aizawa stated sipping from a juice pouch as the students got ready for their next class. Izuku came out of the locker room in a full body suit with green wrist and ankle bands along with a green belt around his waist to the curiosity of his fellow students. Did something happen to your suit Izuku? I thought your brother Donnie made a new one for you. Ajiro asked while the girls of the class stared at the skin-tight body suit with dragging tongues seeing Izuku had put on more muscle over his training. Oh no, but Melissa Shield made a new suit for me contained in these wrist and ankle bands and belt. 
engage. Izuku commanded as lights came to life on the green accessories. The wristbands expanded spiraling up his arms all the way to his shoulder and down around his hand. While the ankle bands climbed up his legs and around his feet and the belt expanded linking up with the armor on his legs and arms before coming up as a faceplate covering the lower half of his face. Izuku's armor had a spiral pattern on his arms and legs looking similar to combat wrappings. While the armor on his torso was layered all the way up to his faceplate. The armor was primarily an emerald green with spirals of black on his arms and legs with his face plate being black as well. All of 1A was astonished at the Izuku's new suit. What the hell? That's amazing man Denki commented looking at Izuku's armor with what one might call green with envy. I agree Izuku your armor is truly state of the art. Ada agreed feeling a little underdressed compared to his friend. The face blade around Izuku's mouth split apart sliding back so he could talk clearly. Thanks guys Melissa calls it the full armor. He said as all might clap to get the students' attention. Now, now children let's stay focused. We have an assignment today. All Might said but on the inside he was a little peeved. Oh man I didn't know Melissa could do stuff like that. Dave you've been holding out on me anyway today's lesson will be a race there will be 4-5 member races. I will be somewhere in training ground Gamma the first person to reach me after I send the distress signal is the winner. Simple enough wouldn't you say? All Might asked as the students nodded with excitement. Very well let's begin with Siro, Midoriya, Anjiro, Ida and Ashido. The symbol of peace stated before heading into the training field. As the first five waited for All Might to send the signal Izuku turned seeing Mina's eyes on him no doubt inspecting his suit. Him it kind of reminds me of All Might's Bronze Age suit. Mina approves. Ashido said giving Izuku a thumbs up as the distress signal went off. The five immediately took off with Ida and Siro taking the lead right before a bolt of green lightning raced past them. Hot damn look at Midoriya go Kirishima said as Izuku leapt nearly halfway into the training ground and one single bound landing on a walkway of pipes before running across them with ease bouncing throughout the training field with complete control. This is perfect I can't believe it feels so light it's like it's not even there. Thank you Melissa Izuku thought to himself as he jumped between the walls to his objective. Oh man he's even faster than before and he's not even using his snake cowl thing. Kaminari said hardly able to keep up with Izuku as he moved from one screen the next. Standing next to him was Bakugu who grit his teeth. While I wasted my time with that asshole best genist Izuku jumped ahead of me again. And he wasn't even doing hero work Katsuki thought to himself as he watched Izuku sail through the air and landed at All Might's location far ahead of his classmate. Seeing that they had a few moments before Siro arrived All Might turned to Izuku. You've really made amazing progress young Midoriya I'm glad to see Melissa was able to help you become your best self at this point in time. All Might said giving Izuku a thumbs up as Siro arrived a bit disheartened. Oh man I thought this was my time to shine first Todoroki and now you Midwaria am I just around to be someone's prop to show off? He asked as Ida arrived. Chin up Siro you managed to take second place that's nothing to be ashamed of Ida said adjusting his glasses as Ajiro and finally Mina arrived. Well looks like we're bringing up the rear this time around. Ajiro stated as Mina smiled with a shrug. Can't win them all. She said as All Might draped the winner belt around Midoriya. Good job to you all I'm amazed at the progress each of you has made. The symbol of peace declared before allowing the students to leave the training ground to make way for the next set. Izuku looked at his suit this would be his first time trying it on and it had felt like a second skin to him. Melissa had really gone all out with it. I have to call Melissa and tell her how great the suit feels. He said smiling. After class Izuku along with the rest of his classmates were going to the cafeteria. Izuku walked next to Anjiro and Kirishima the trio trying to come up with a good time to meet up for training before Katsuki appeared in front of them his eyes on Izuku's. Don't think you've won Izuku you may have gotten in a little training. But that's not going to help you catch up to me Katsuki shouted as Izuku grinned. Looks like you're a little worried Katsuki didn't get much action during your internship. Izuku said needling Katsuki a little which was new to the blonde. I trained under one of the top 10 heroes while you played in a lab there's no chance you can beat me Katsuki retorted as he walked away. Hiroshima looked at Izuku and chuckled. You two really get along. The redhead said as Izuku shrugged. Better than we used to anyway. He responded as they took their seats at table. So Izuku are you concerned with what the final exams may be? Anjiro asked eating his bowl of rice as Izuku scratched his cheek. I'm more anxious about the physical part of the exam. Who knows what they're going to test us on. The green-haired hero said as he sliced off a piece of katsudan eating it slowly as he ran through several different scenarios. Yeah that is problematic. Ada said as he sat down next to Izuku. All we can do is prepare as best we can. The taller boy stated before a feminine voice caught their attention. I wouldn't worry too much. I heard from an upperclassman that the final exams are always robot fights like the entrance exams. The girl in question had long ginger hair with teal eyes. Sorry I overheard what you guys were talking about. My name is Itsuka Kendo from class 1B. 
she said introducing herself before Monoma appeared at her shoulder. Kendo what are you doing that was our hard-earned advantage over Klasa he shouted in the girl's ear before he was whacked over the head falling unconscious. Don't worry about him he's just himself. Kendo said waving as she walked away. Well that's a big relief for me Denki said creating a small line of electricity between his fingers. If we're fighting against robots I don't have to worry about holding back. He said snapping the electricity off his fingers. Tell me about it. That was my biggest concern too. Mina said as she smiled with relief fist bumping against Kaminari. Izuku wore a calm smile. But on the inside he was a little disappointed he'd really wanted a test to show off his skill. Oh well guess this test will be easy after all. He thought to himself. After school that day the teachers met to discuss the upcoming final exams. As you know with the recent increase in villains lately we need to up the difficulty of our final exams to better teach our students. With that in mind I left it to Aizawa to determine the student pairings for which teacher. Aizawa if you would. Principal Nezu said as Aizawa stood up. Alright I've put some thought into each pairing based on their skill level, personality, and overall cooperativeness. The first team will be Shoto Todoroki and Momoye Irazu. Their over-reliance on their quirks needs to be addressed if they're to grow, so I'll be their opponent and will erase their quirks, Aizawa said before continuing on his list. The next team will be Izuku Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugu. I believe the two of them are the backbone of the class and their competitive nature will be a major hurdle as far as working together. All Might it will be your job to correct this, Aizawa said as Toshi nodded. I understand Aizawa. Good the next teams will be Denki and Mina versus you Principal Nezu those two aren't taking things serious enough often underestimating the gravity of things because their quirks are so destructive. I'd like you to show them that first impressions aren't everything. 13 will face Yuga and Achako your black hole will present a unique challenge to both of their quirks. Mike will be against Koji and Kayoka since you all use sound I figure you'd be best to handle those two. Ectoplasm facing Tsuyu and Fumikage both are well-rounded students so dealing with your quirk will make them think out of the box. Midnight vs Hanta and Minoru. Snipe will be taking on Mizo and Toru. Cementos will be against Rikido and Ijiro both of them are aggressive and need to learn that retreating is sometimes the only and best option. Finally Power Loader will be overseeing Tenya and Mashura. Aizawa looked up at his fellow teachers. Any questions? The teachers shook their heads. Alright then let the final exams begin. Principal Nezu stated slapping his paw on the table. Izuku checked his bag for probably the third time since he left the house. He was currently on his way to Momo's house the girl had put together a study session for Kaminari, Mina, Mashurao, Kayoka, and Siro and had asked him to help her with it. He felt kind of bad having to miss on studying with Ida and Achako. But as class rep it was his job to see that his classmates got all the help he could give them and if Momo the number one student in class was asking for help with supporting their classmates he couldn't refuse. Izuku knocked on the door to Momo's house and found it opened by none other than the girl herself. Oh Izuku glad you could make it. She said opening the door fully showing off her casual clothes. She was dressed in a short sleeve white shirt and capri pants. Come on in. She said as Izuku stepped past her smelling her perfume. It put him in mind of peaches and that brought a smile to his face. You really take after your namesake. He said as Momo at her head to the side at his comment. You smell like peaches. He clarified making the rich girl blush as she fanned her face. Well I mean you see I wasn't sure what to wear. I didn't want to wear something too noticeable after all it's not just the two of us. She said putting some hair behind her ear as she looked at the ground blushing. Is it too much? She asked looking up at Izuku bashfully who smiled stroking her head. Not at all, I love it. He said smiling at her as she mirrored the action the two walking towards the dining room where Momo had set up a miniature classroom. Quite the setup you have here Momo, so what can I do to help? He asked looking back at her as Momo took a deep breath. Well you seem to be pretty good at English so I thought you could help everyone in that. She said as Izuku nodded. That works, my dad works overseas. And taught me a little English while I was growing up, so it's pretty natural for me now. He said taking out his English textbook. Um while we wait is there anything you need tutoring with? I know you had study plans with Achako and Ida and I'm sorry for making you come here. The least I could do is helping you with what you needed to study. She said moving closer to him as Izuku thought about that. Don't worry about it Momo I'm class rep it's my duty to see my classmates succeed but if you're sure I could use some help with geometry. He said fishing out his geometry textbook. Wonderful let's get started then Momo sat down excitedly next to Izuku barely an inch of space between them as the two dove deep into geometry. Izuku couldn't help, but noticed the proximity of Momo, and it was distracting him a little the scent of peaches, the heat radiating off her the feel of her breath as she leaned in close to explain something. Just when he thought he was going to crack there was a knock at the door. It's probably everyone else I'll go get it while you set up he said jerking to his feet as he walked to the door. Behind his back Momo frowned. So close she thought to herself as she watched Izuku round the corner to get the door. Izuku opened the door seeing the rest of the study group there. 
Siro and Denki's eyes widened at seeing their class rep there. What the, Midoriya what are you doing here? I didn't know you were studying with Yeyarazu too. Siro said only for Denki to grip Midoriya's collar. Or maybe you're here for another reason something more illicit maybe. A tawdry affair between class rep and his subordinate. Midoriya you swine Denki shouted before Gyro stabbed him with her earphone jack vibrating his entire body. Don't be stupid obviously Yamomo needed help with tutoring all of us so she called in Midori. Gyro said giving Izuku a wink as they all filed in. Izuku released a slow breath of relief as he followed everyone inside. The study session began well enough with Izuku taking Mashurao and Siro to help with their English while Momo took on Denki, Mina, and Kayoka. Momo and Izuku sat on one side next to each other as they looked over their respective 2D's work. Shortly and Izuku noticed Momo playing with his leg dragging a finger up and down his thigh. It was cute and he didn't mind. But Momo steadily grew bolder, going from a finger to three to her whole hand, from stroking his thigh to gripping it and sliding closer to his groin. It was getting harder and harder to ignore or play it off. At one point Momo reached for his stroking it through his pants causing him to gasp loudly. Ajiro looked up at Izuku and eyebrow quirked. You all right Izuku? Ajiro asked as Izuku nodded. Oh yeah just you know really impressed with Yeyarazu's home he said blushing fiercely as he nodded energetically. Mashurao didn't seem to buy it, but Siro certainly did. Tell me about it I've only seen homes like this in movies. Siro agreed. Izuku was thankful for Siro cosigning his lie, but he didn't have time to feel guilty as he felt something that needed his attention more. Momo unzipped his pants with a flourish slipping her slender hand into his pants like a viper into a crib and grabbed hold of her prize manipulating his as surely as any puppeteer. Izuku bit his lip to keep a moan from escaping as he looked over at her, and was astonished to see she was acting completely normal as if she wasn't playing him like a fiddle as she corrected Denki's paper here and there. So Midori, is this the way you're supposed to write this? Ajiro asked passing his paper to Izuku who looked it over trying and failing to ignore the expert hand job Momo was giving him. Oh um no you chose the wrong right. Instead of writing right this way, he wrote Izuku gave a low moan as Momo stroked the very tip of his smearing his pre across the head of him. Yo Midoriya you're really red are you okay? Siro asked having been listening to see if he had maybe gotten that question correct. But noticed Midoriya's bright red face and labored breath. In an Otwam fine. He said sitting up a little straighter as Momo relented for the moment allowing him to compose himself. Yeah I'm fine as I was saying. Instead of right you used right as in a ritual. Izuku said writing both words out to show to Ajiro who nodded. Oh I got it thanks. Ajiro said correcting his answer and making a note of that. It was at this moment Izuku felt Momo resume her motion ramping him up to another orgasm. But just as before she stopped short keeping him on a razor's edge never allowing him to completely compose himself, but also not pushing him to the point he'd actually climax. By the end of the study session Izuku was a ball of frustration a slight breeze could bring him to climax at this point. Man I feel bad for Midoriya tutoring us must have really taken it out of him. Siro said as they were ushered out by Momo saying she'd see to Izuku and with the assurances of the other girls the boys were convinced to leave with them. As they left Mina gave a look at Momo and shook her head. What a naughty rich girl you are. She said shaking her head with a giggle as she left. Momo also gave a giggle as she walked back to the dining room finding Izuku catching his breath before looking at her. And the look he gave nearly caused her knees to buckle. That was reckless Momo what would have happened if we got caught. He shouted exasperated. That was a bad idea I can't believe you did dot that. He asked looking at the blush on her face as she clutched a hand to her mouth. Momo, he asked as she looked at him. Go on tell me how bad of a girl I am. She said huffing lightly and now Izuku learned what was hidden behind Yeyarazu's perfect girl facade, the face of a slight masochist. Izuku swallowed feeling a twinge in his overworked and unrewarded. At any other time he might have thought better of this, but at this point his was in control and there was nothing he could do about it. Izuku stood up and walked towards her. You empty-headed rich girl did you think I wouldn't get you back for that stunt you pulled he shouted as Momo jumped her legs quaking as she stared at Izuku. Tuam sorry I didn't me. You shut your mouth when I'm talking in fact why don't you put it to some use. He said pushing her to her knees. Momo yelped a little feeling the strength of Izuku's grip on her shoulders as she was forced to stare down. Yeah that's better. He said before tearing open her shirt and snatching her bra off letting her s jiggle and sway freely. Now wrap those around my you cow. He whispered as Momo did just that squeezing his between her ass sliding them up and down his length as she licked at his tip. Her was so wet right now she was sure her panties were soaked to the point there would be a puddle on the floor. Izuku gripped Momo by her ponytail as he thrust in between her heavy tits. The feeling of Momo's ass around his was heaven as he thrust faster forcing Momo down on his until burying his in her mouth and coming hard. The first shot coated the back of Momo's throat causing her to cough as she pulled off Izuku's as it splattered her face and ass in his cream. Momo lay there on the floor her body twitching as her orgasm rocked her soaking straight through her clothes. 
Izuku dropped to his knees immediately feeling bad. Oh Momo I'm so sorry too didn't mean Momo pressed her hand to his lips and smiled. That was most glorious Izuku. We really should do this more often. She said sitting up as she drug her hand through Izuku's mess taking finger into her mouth to savor his taste all Izuku could do was stare at her and wonder how she hid this side of herself so well. Soon the days of the final exam began Izuku and his class gave it everything they had looking forward to the practical the easiest part of the test or so they thought. Izuku lead his class to the training field each dressed in their hero suits where they found the majority of UAS teachers waiting for them. Deku what do you think all the teachers are here for? Achako asked as Izuku rubbed his chin. How maybe they'll be judging us like in the entrance exams? He proposed before Principal Nezu stepped forward. Now as you all may have found out or surmised the practical exam is usually held with robotic villains similar to the entrance exams. That is not the case here. Nezu said shocking the students, but none more so than Denki and Mina who had considered themselves in the clear as long as they passed the practical knowing they could let loose on dummy villains. With the rise in villain activity we thought it prudent to step up the intensity of our final exams as well. Instead of mechanical adversaries you will be broken into pairs to face one of the teachers you see here. Most of the students' jaws dropped the exceptions were Izuku, Shoto, and Katsuki. Sir isn't this a bit much you can't honestly expect us to succeed here I mean you are all pros. We don't stand a chance Kaminari said looking at his fellow students seeing varying degrees of agreement throughout. We do expect you to overcome this, and you either will or you won't. Aizawa said bluntly silencing any further objections. Don't give up just yet students you haven't heard the parameters of the test yet. They are exceedingly simple all you need to do to pass the test is a clamp these handcuffs on your opponent in any way you can or b exit the training ground through the designated area. You will have 30 minutes to accomplish either. You see sometimes fighting a villain head-on isn't the best course at times you need to consider getting reinforcements or retreating. The choice will be you and your partners whether to stand and fight or run and get help. Mezu said, and have no fear children to make things a little fair each of us will be wearing these ultra compressed weights that will equal a quarter of our body weight, so it will be possible to overcome us, but that doesn't mean you should completely ignore the possibility of escape. All Might explained as Aizawa stepped forward, I decided who would be partnering with whom, and which teacher you would be facing so first up will be Kirishima and Sato versus Cementos. The rest of you are free to either strategize with your partner or watch the battles in the monitoring room. As such the teams are as follows, Takoyami and Asui vs. Ectoplasm, Ida and Ajiro vs. Power Loader, Todoroki and Yeyurazu vs. Myself, Yuraka and Ayama vs. 13, Ashido and Kaminari vs. Nezu, Jiro and Koda vs. Present Mike, Hagakira and Shoji vs. Snipe, Minda and Siro vs. Midnight, and finally Bakugu and Midoriya vs. All Might. Any of you who don't pass will not be able to go to the summer camp over the break and will be forced to take remedial classes. At this announcement a shout of joy could be heard from the shortest person in class as he looked at Siro. We have but one mission Siro, to strip midnight of every inch of clothing mine to explain. You're such a scumbag you know that. Siro said following after his partner as Izuku and Katsuki looked at one another. Just stay out of my way Izuku I don't want you messing with my victory over all might. Katsuki growled as Izuku smirked. Get in your way. Just try to keep up Katsuki by the time you get there I'll have already won. The two boys looked at each other with a confident grin before Katsuki turned away and Izuku made his way to the monitoring room finding Achako there along with Recovery Girl. Deku I thought I'd you'd be here soon. Strategizing with Bakugu didn't work out. She stated knowing how that would go with the explosive blonde. Izuku nodded. Yahai didn't even ask looks like it'll be a race to see who can pass the test first. He said eager to show his mentor how much he'd learned over his internship. Well the same thing happened with me and Ayama. I think he's better off strategizing with his cape than me. She said with a giggle as the match started. So do you think Kirishima and Sato are going to pass? She asked as Izuku rubbed his chin watching as Kirishima and Sato rushed in barreling through Cementos concrete barricades. Izuku sighed shaking his head. Not with this strategy they're not. Cementos quirk is nearly inexhaustible so going at him head on was not the best choice. He said as recovery girl nodded. Correct young Midoriya those two are both literally and figuratively banging their heads against a wall. And as if to prove her point Sato and Kirishima were swallowed by cement leaving nothing but their heads sticking out of the ground. Dang that sucks. Achako said feeling sorry for the two boys as the next match soon began with Takoyami and Tsu taking center stage. I'm sure Tsu and Takoyami can take this right. She asked a little worried for her friend as she looked at Izuku. While the two are suited for each other. Dark Shadow being a close to midrange quirk and Tsu being great at every distance the only problem I can see is getting to the real ectoplasm. Izuku stated as they watched the match ending with Su and Takoyami employing a rather sneaky tag team move to capture ectoplasm. Su blushed heavily as she looked at a camera. I hope Izuku didn't see me do something that gross. She thought to herself as she and Takoyami left the field. 
The next team was Ada and Ajiro. Come on Ajiro and Ada, Izuku said looking at the screen. He knew Ada wanted to prove himself after what happened with Stain. So Izuku was hoping he'd put that knowledge to good use and Ajiro had been working really hard in their sparring sessions. They'll win this, he said simply as Ada and Ajiro performed another team attack with Ajiro being hurled outside the battlegrounds. Yes Izuku shouted happily as Achako smiled gently looking at Izuku getting so excited for his friend's victory. He cares so much how could I ever think he wouldn't have room for me in his heart. She asked herself as Momo and Todoroki came on screen. This is going to be tough for those two I can see why Mr. Aizawa pitted them against himself. Izuku said as Recovery Girl confirmed this. Each of these matches has forced you students to confront a glaring weakness, such as Sato and Kirishima's endurance limits. But the real test is how you overcome this. Recovery Girl stated as Todoroki was captured by Aizawa leaving only Momo left. Momo was running as fast as she could trying to think of what she could do. No this isn't good I can't think of anything. This is just like the sports festival she thought before stopping. Just like the sports festival I couldn't think and lost. I would have lost Izuku there and then if Mina hadn't won. Though I can't let that happen again I won't lose she shouted to herself stopping her running and heading back to Todoroki. She'd make sure the two of them passed no matter what. This would not end up like the sports festival again. She stopped panicking and is thinking clearly now. Izuku said looking at Momo with a proud smile as she and Todoroki pulled off a rather ingenious victory over Aizawa. Well looks like it's my turn now. I won't let Momo show me up Achako stated leaving the monitoring room to meet up with Ayama as they faced 13. Izuku watched as Achako willingly let go of the bar she'd been holding onto to avoid being sucked away by 13. He swore he felt his heart drop as at the last second 13 closed her black hole only to then be pinned and handcuffed by Achako. Way to go your raka Izuku shouted as Ida who'd just joined him smiled and clapped him on the shoulder. Seeing our class rep so invested in his fellow classmates makes me proud to be in class 1A. Ada said as Izuku blushed grateful that Tenya took his enthusiasm in such a professional way. Next was Mina and Kaminari and Izuku was disappointed at their loss, but not surprised. Mina and Kaminari weren't taking things as seriously as they should have just because the principal was a seemingly helpless individual. They say knowledge is power for a reason. Izuku said with a nod as the next match began. It was an incredibly slow start with Gyro and Koda being pinned down by present Mike's far-reaching voice. But Koda and Kayoka managed to pull out a win over the speaker hero. Though Recovery Girl was incredibly disappointed in present Mike's performance. Izuku couldn't help but smile a little. Even the teachers were being evaluated it seemed. The next match was a bit of a toss-up in Izuku's mind. Snipe was incredibly skilled and unlike either of the students was perfectly capable of defeating them from long range. Those two might be in trouble. Izuku said, but surprisingly Snipe assisted in his own downfall by throwing down a smoke grenade and being distracted by Shoji allowing Toru to get in close and cuff him, though without some embarrassment on the pro's end. Izuku couldn't tell what exactly happened, but from Snipe's movements he seemed to be in a bit of a pickle. Izuku admittedly did not have much hope for this pairing. If anything Siro might have to pull both their weight just to pass, but shockingly it was Minda who won it for both of them. Wow guess even Minda has his moments of true heroism. Izuku said with a proud nod as the girls in class shook their heads. Even a broken clock is right twice a day, was the unspoken consensus of the girls in class. But with the end of that match Izuku knew it was finally his turn. He walked out of the monitoring room and made his way to the training field finding Katsuki already there. Izuku engaged his full armor as he stood next to his rival each staring at the door before it finally opened allowing them in. Izuku's faceplate slid into place with a metallic clink as the two stepped forward into the sight of their next match with one another. Izuku and Katsuki stepped into the training ground. It was another cityscape and they had entered on the main street and at the other end they could see the exit gate. But right in front of it was All Might. He stood proudly his fists on his hips and a wide smile on his face his blue eyes sparking at them. Come heroes and don't hold back to drive his point home All Might slammed his first forward causing a burst of wind to rocket down the street shattering the windows as it rocketed towards the two heroes in training. Bakugu seeing the incoming attack drove his foot forward bracing himself as he looked at Izuku and watched as Izuku at his fist back and then drove it forward when shooting to collide with All Might's wind the two pressures collided and shot upward, punching a hole in a passing cloud. All Might stood up fully his smile unshaken. He's already able to counter with air pressure his training really did pay off. All Might thought before deciding to engage the two. All Might launched himself forward at Izuku and Katsuki. Katsuki looked at Midoriya and grit his teeth. You're not going to show me up Izuku Katsuki shouted as he exploded into the air towards All Might. Izuku summoned his full cowl green lighting arcing around his body as he jumped into action as well dashing down the main street to meet All Might. 
Izuku went for a roundhouse kick towards All Might as the hero leapt over the intended blow with ease green lighting arced around the two as All Might sailed upward to meet Katsuki who answered with an explosion. But All Might was prepared for this as he launched another air pressure punch forcing Katsuki's explosion back into his face and driving All Might towards the ground in order to deliver a kick to Izuku who dodged the blow by back flipping away. All Might slammed into the pavement sending out deep cracks that traveled across the street and up some of the building. Izuku dropped to his feet and dashed forward in an instant to connect with a full-powered punch. But as the blow connected he saw his fist squarely in All Might's hand. You'll have to do better than that hero All Might shouted as he spun with Izuku just in time to slam him into Katsuki batting the blonde boy away tumbling down the street before hurling Izuku in the opposite direction watching him slam into a wall. Izuku coughed harshly the wind being driven from his lungs at the blow. Two can't even land a blow All Might really is amazing Izuku thought to himself as he opened his eyes to see a portion of railing at him. His eyes bucked as he went to dodge, but the railing pinned him as its torn portions embedded in the wall trapping him there. Now then that should hold you for a moment, All Might said turning and shooting his hand out to grab hold of Bakugu's face, but to the pro's surprise Bakugu unleashed a barrage of explosions. Most people would recoil at having their faces grabbed, but not you young Bakugu. Your dogged determination is admirable, but even so. All Might released Bakugu to float in the air for a moment before launching a punch at the boy. Izuku from where he sat pinned against the wall saw everything happening in slow motion. Come on move he shouted to himself grabbing hold of the railing and pulled feeling the metal twist and bend before snapping apart allowing Izuku to move with lightning speed arcing down the street and leaping above All Might and slamming his foot down on the pro's arm driving him to the ground before spinning and catching All Might with a kick to the chest using the pro to launch himself away grabbing hold of Bakugu as they gained some distance. All Might coughed as he rubbed his chest. That was a pretty good hit young Midoriya. All Might thought to himself catching some of his lost breath as he stood up. Izuku landed with Katsuki before dropping the ladder on the ground. The blonde shot up glaring at Izuku. What the fuck you do that for you bastard I didn't ask for your help Bakugu shouted as Izuku looked at him. I know the only reason I did that was because I didn't want you to pass out and not see me win this. Katsuki's eyes bucked at the why garbage Izuku had said to him. The hell you will I'm going to be the one to surpass All Might here and now not you. You fucking ninja nerd Izuku looked at Katsuki dead on for a moment before speaking. Prove it then. He said simply before the lightning around his body snapped to a red hue and began to waft off his body. The lights on Izuku's wrists changed from green to red. Secondary form activated. The suit spoke before the armor around Izuku's legs and arms disengaged the wrapping around his arms began binding around his hands and forcing his fists as the same transformation took place on his feet reinforcing the armor there as well. Full armor snake cow, Izuku stated before shooting towards All Might. The hero could barely keep track of Izuku's speed as he dodged to the side of Izuku's punch his arm and fist sailing by. Too straightforward young Midoriya, All Might thought to himself. He'd seen Izuku's fighting styles and the boy was a crafty fighter always thinking two steps ahead so a straightforward punch like that was unusual but easily avoided. All Might surmised before receiving a fist to the left side of his face throwing him to the right into Izuku's stretched arm effectively clotheslining the hero as he was sent sailing into a nearby building. Izuku's arm retracted as he turned to where All Might landed. That's my new technique thanks to my training. Python ambush smash. No matter where you go it'll catch you. From in the monitoring room the students of class 1A looked on in awe at what they were seeing. Is this even real how can they be this strong? Sato said swallowing as he looked on. The class watched as Izuku's fist stretched past All Might a complete miss, but then it bent to the right gaining speed before bending back towards Izuku and All Might and then turned once more to slam into the hero's face. Not just Izuku, but Bakugu as well Bakugu had been battered pretty good, but he still came back for more almost instantly it was insane. Even my twinkling can't stand next to their aurora, Ayama said feeling so inadequate. Todoroki clenched his fist looking at Midoriya as he faced off against the number one hero with a smile. I have to get stronger, Shoto said clenching his fist. Bakugu stared at Izuku he seemed so far ahead right now. Bakugu clenched his fist and slammed it into his face and shook his head. Though I won't lose to this nerd. Not now not ever he shouted standing up and rushing forward as All Might stepped out of the hole in the building he'd made wiping his cheek. I see you've made a lot of progress Midoriya, but will it be enough I wonder. All Might said before appearing right in front of Izuku and slamming his fist into his stomach or so he thought as he saw Midoriya's arms brought up to block the blow and just as he went for a second punch Bakugu grabbed hold of Midoriya's shoulder snatching him out of the way so he could blast All Might full in the face. Get out of my way you fucking nerd Bakugu shouted as his explosion went off causing All Might to slide back before he cleared the smoke just in time to dodge another punch by Izuku. And remembering what happened last time he dodged away from the next punch which came from above slamming into the ground as All Might stepped back and turned dodging an explosion from Bakugu and went for a back fist only for his punch to be countered by Izuku's. All Might smirked. 
They're not working together per se. This truly is a competition between them to see who can take me down first as such it's hard to tell who's going to make what move. Izuku knew that there was no way Katsuki would work with him, so by goading him into competing with him he spurred Bakugu into action. From there it was just Izuku's methodical mind to keep from hitting Bakugu and Bakugu's instincts on when and where to take advantage of any opening All Might get. All Might danced from another explosion from Katsuki before countering another ambush punch from Izuku the shockwave blowing away the smoke as he pulled Izuku forward and drove his fist into the boy's stomach driving him back. But as Izuku flew back Katsuki grabbed hold of him and spun launching him back at All Might with explosive force. Izuku threw back his hands before bringing them forward and having them cross over one another like a DNA helix to slam into All Might's crossed arms forcing the hero back before he threw his arms wide knocking Izuku off as the boy flew from his view. All Might's eyes widened at the massive wall of explosion coming at him. I see, Izuku was just Bakugu's distraction. But that thinking is too simple. All Might thought as he clenched his fist and slammed it forward. Texas Smash All Might shouted as he punched forward his wind pressure carving a hole straight through Bakugu's explosion forcing it apart before hearing a click and looked seeing Midori at his side panting heavily as steam jettisoned from his armor. You're under arrest All Might Izuku panted leaning on the hero as All Might smiled and then laughed out loud. Well done young Bakugu and Midori your teamwork was exceptional the hero laughed as Katsuki walked up. Don't get why Izuku you were only able to do that because of me. So it's my win Izuku turned to Katsuki and smiled. Thanks for the help Katsuki I couldn't have done it without you. Izuku said with a smile as Bakugu took a step back not expecting Izuku to say that. Yeah well remember that Katsuki said as walked past Izuku. All Might clapped Izuku on the back. Good work young Midoriya I'm proud of you. Not only have you made this power your own, but also have found a way forward with your friend. Izuku smiled as he watched Katsuki walk away and smiled. It's all thanks to you All Might. He said returning the hero's smile before leaving as well. Several days later the results of the final exam were announced by Aizawa. I'll just tell you who failed. The list is shorter and fur from that who passed. Aizawa announced before speaking out the names of those who failed. Nina Ashido, Denki Kaminari, Rikido Sato, Ijiro Kirishima, and last Hanta Siro. Siro flopped forward onto his desk in disappointment while Minda wore a righteous smile. This is karmic justice Siro you got to lay on midnight's lap the whole test repent Minda thought to himself. Now it was stated that those who didn't pass the final exams could not attend the training camp. That was a necessary deception in order to push you to your breaking point. Aizawa stated as Ida slapped his hands on his desk. You are continually shaking my faith in hero society Mr. Aizawa I'm nearing my breaking point Ida said emphasizing each word with an air chop. Ignoring Ada's outburst and the subsequent cheers of those who failed, Aizawa continued. But make no mistake failure is still failure and there are consequences to it. Those of you who failed will be put through remedial classes as well as training during the summer camp so much so you'll wish you were dead. Aizawa said chilling the jubilation of his class in an instant. Now that that's been said let's begin class. At the end of the school day as class 1A was packing up to leave a conversation was struck up between the girls. I wonder where the training camp will take place I'd like to pack accordingly. Momo said wondering what gear she should bring as well as what kind of clothing to pack. And you have a point the teachers are being really hush. Hush about it which leaves us in the dark as well. See you responded. Toru smirked as she clapped her hands. Then why not go shopping to fill in some of the gaps? Toru suggested to which the other girls agreed. Well I do have the time what with UAS condition that we are not to leave on any trips my schedule which included my family's trip to Italy has suddenly opened up. Momo said pouting a little. She'd intended to invite Izuku on her trip as well. A whole summer with her beloved a girl could only dream. Achako's mouth fell open at this statement. What is your life? She asked swooning at the wealth of her classmate. Did I hear something about a training camp shopping spree? I could use some more weights. Hiroshima said as others around the class began to ask about the trip as well. I could use some night vision goggles, for extracurricular activities. Minda said rubbing his hands together. And I'll need proper footwear for the outdoors. Ada responded. Well it's settled then how about all of class 1A go on a shopping trip together? What do you think class rep? Toru asked clamping around Izuku's arm pressing it between her s causing the boy to blush. Um sure sounds like a good idea. He admitted as the classroom door opened to Katsuki's exit. Count me the hell out he shouted slamming the door behind him. Well nobody asked him anyway. Toru said glad nobody could see her sticking out her tongue. Taking his stance as class rep Izuku turned to the remaining members of class 1A. So how about this set we meet up at the mall to go shopping? He asked before everyone agreed to the idea and said their goodbyes for the day. Izuku entered the mall with the rest of his class as they all looked around finding something of interest. Alright since everybody has different things they need how about we break into teams and meet back in like two hours. He asked to which everyone agreed and paired off to find the things they needed. Izuku looked around seeing that everyone was gone. And what should I do? 
he asked thinking about what he might need for the training camp. Guess I could use some new shoes and maybe wrist and ankle weights. Yeah that's a good idea. He said turning head to head to the sports shop and bumped into a man in a hoodie. Oh excuse me see. You're from the sports festival right? The man asked cutting him off and slinging an arm around his neck pressing his fingers to the back of his neck. I'm a big fan. Said none other than Tamura Shigaraki. Don't make a scene I just really wanted to have a chat maybe get an autograph you disgusting heroes are all about showing off to your fans right? He asked glaring at Izuku with a chapped smile. Izuku's mind was racing thinking about how he could get out of this. From what he knew Shigaraki's quirk could rot his throat in moments before he could even call up his full cow. Sure I don't mind. Izuku said smiling broadly reminiscent of All Might and that pissed Shigaraki off even more. He hated this kid, he really did. Come on then let's have a seat. Tamura whispered. Achako was walking with the other girls as they all entered a clothing store as she listened to Mina talk. So what gets guys going? Mina asked before answering her own question. Seeing girls wearing clothes they picked out especially panties. Mina whispered causing several blushes. This is the perfect opportunity. I'm pretty sure Midori is by himself so all we have to do is get him over here and have him choose some panties for us and boom we've got him. Mina said slapping her fist into her palm. But um how do we get him over here? It's not like Izuku is going to just walk into a girl's clothing store on his own. Jairo said as Mina shook her finger. Of course not that's why we have to throw him some bait. She said pointing at Achako. What me why me? She asked not that she was against the idea, but she wasn't sure why Mina would pick her. Simple you're cute and innocent. Unlike me, Sue, or our resident rich masochist over here Izuku wouldn't suspect you of setting him up. Mina said poking Achako's cheek as Momo huffed at such a crude nickname. Just flash him that adorable smile and that cute blush and he'll go anywhere with you. She said before pushing Achako out of the store. Now lure that beast here Mina said waving her off before turning to her compatriots. Now, where are the thongs? She said with a devious smile that made the remaining girls shiver and wish they were with Achako. Achako pouted for a moment before smiling glad she could be the one getting Deku even if it was for a trap like this. She soon found him sitting at the fountain with some guy in a hoodie who had his arm draped around Izuku rather possessively. Deku, she asked drawing both their attention. Okay sadly the chapter is over. And if you enjoyed the video just leave a like and subscribe with post notification. So when the next chapter is ready, you will be notified. Okay see you in the next video. Bye.